How to get back from uh, Athens until early this morning. Oh, really? Or, yeah. Did you guys go out? Yeah, 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 yeah. We went. There was a show last night. There's a show tonight. Her mom's up there with her tonight doing the show up there. What show? Some comedian, preacher, preacher, some preacher Lawson. Huh. He was like he he want, he was like fifth. Side Joan C. Edwards Stadium here on the campus of Marshall University for tonight's first ever battle at the border as your Cabell Midland Knights will take on the Ironton Fighting Tigers, Jason Toy. Also, we've got uh, Chris Tatum here with us. We're going to check in with Kent Bryson coming up here in just a bit. He's going to be on the sidelines tonight, so a new addition for us there. Looking forward to bringing you that. And, Chris, we set the stage here for what's going to be pretty cool. This is a border battle that was kind of, that came up with not only folks at Cabell Midland talking with the folks in Ironton, and they make that transition now to having a two-year deal for this. So 
tonight. Ironton designated as the home team. Cabell Midland, the visiting team. Next year, they'll switch the role, the uh, roles on that. But you got one of the best teams in southeastern Ohio in Ironton. You got one of the top teams in Cabell Midland. And I tell you what, it's a great atmosphere to set the stage for this. How exciting for a high school athlete to be playing in a, in a Division I uh, college stadium tonight. I mean, how good is that for them? How good is it for both communities to be here coming together to have a game like this? And more importantly, like you said, you've got two very storied programs mm-hmm. uh, in Ironton and Cabell Midland here. And you go back even to the days of Barbersville and Ironton. Yeah. So it, it goes back a while. Although these two teams have only met twice, there's some history between these guys, and, and, and they know one another. These athletes all know one another. They're both they're both excited to be here tonight, and, you know, it's a, it's a great atmosphere for these kids to be here. I mean, I hate that the Marshall game's going on at the same time. <laughs> but having said that, what a great spot for both Ironton and Cabell Midland to be playing right down in downtown Huntington, West Virginia. Yeah, it's going to be a, a, a nice setup for it. And the great thing about it is folks were tailgating out here earlier today. We got here just about shortly after 2 o'clock, and there were folks already tailgating. It makes for a great atmosphere here, which is going to be fantastic. The orange and black on the near sideline. you got the, the red and the white and then the, the pewter on the far sideline. Good turnout so far. And you talk about the atmosphere to be able to play at a, at a college stadium like this. And I give a tip of the cap to Christian uh, Spears and for the sure. folks here at Marshall in realizing, hey, you know what? This stadium's not utilized more than, what, eight times a year between – Six football games, turf bowl, and well, maybe let's take it nine. You got the Marshall right. Marathon, yeah. and you've got also two the band competition sure. out here too. So this is going to be cool, and I hope this I hope this triggers more. Well, I think the sense of community, and the, and like you said, hats off to Christian Spears. I think he gets it. The sense yeah. of community and getting people involved at Marshall. There is no better way to get your community involved at Marshall than having two high school teams play a football game here. Before we take the break, let's talk about this. For uh, of course, both these teams undefeated, three and zero for Ironton, coming off some wins here on the you know, finished off things against Fairland in a county rival matchup, sixty two fourteen. Had a win against Jackson, thirty five fourteen. Open up the season by three, seventeen fourteen over Wheelersburg. So. A very good offense, explosive offense, solid defense. That's typical what you find in Ironton. Very fundamentally sound always, dating way back to the Bob Lutz era. Oh, yes. And, and I'm saying you have that on both of these schools. But you look at the record of Cabell Midland, they squeaked by Spring Valley last week. They had a little rough t- little, little time with Spring Valley. They end up coming out with a win. But Spring Valley gave them a little test last week. But a lot of that, too, and Coach, we'll hear from yeah. Luke Sammons, a lot of that was on them. They it had was. a lot of mistakes. They what, did. six fumbles, three turnovers it in was. the game, and costly penalties, too. So Midland is showing signs of playing some really good football early. Well, we talked about that in the, fir- in the first ball game. That was probably their first, be- their best first outing in-, in a number of years. Kent and I talked about that in that broadcast, how well Midland did in their first game. Fundamentally, they came back the next week, and like you said, Luke and, the- and, the- and their coordinators noticed it Fundamental mistakes is what made that game so close. Well, let's see if we can check in with Kent Bryson, who's out on the field. Kent, are you there with us? I'm, I'm here on the field, and I have to tell you, this is a very collegiate-like atmosphere. Uh, the greatest thing that you can actually say about it is that both teams, both sidelines, have brought energy, and uh, we're expecting a good game. This is one of those games where you really don't know which team is going to sort of exert their will. You know, you have the history of the Arlington Fighting Tigers, Cabell Midland is sort of new. This is their 30th year anniversary that's coming up. But when you sit down and look at it, you know, that's why they play the 100 yards. Last night's game uh, up at GW kind of shows you that. Yeah. If, so I'm expecting a Midland victory tonight. I'm expecting a very physical game. And I think the key to the game is going to be whether Ironton can withstand depth and whether Midland can contain Ironton's number four. All right, we'll see how it all shakes out. We'll check in with Kent throughout the game here tonight. We've got more coming up. We're going to sit down and talk with the head coach of the Capital Midland Knights, Luke Sammons, up next right here on 97.9 The River. The Marshall Orthopedics High School Game of the Week is presented by the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute. Fueled by your neighborhood Parmar store. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. And sponsored by Huntington Highway Safety Distracted Driving, Chase and Elkin State Farm, Tax Masters Pro Books, and Kid Sale. Hi, I'm Doug Nestor. I'm from Canova, West Virginia. And when I'm back home, you can find me at my local Parmar store. We had that gold and blue pride at your local Parmar store. We are coming to your neighborhood soon. West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Maryland, we have you covered. Download the Parmar app and sign up for the Parmar Rewards Card. Food, gas, groceries, and more, we are Gold and Blue Proud, and we are Parmar Stores. 
If there's not a Palmar store near you now, there will be soon. Going out? Hungry? Have kids? Looking for a fun, casual joint? Then Roosters at Pullman Square in Huntington is the place to be. Bring the kids 12 and under on Tuesdays, and they eat for just 99 cents all day long. That's right, an entree, two sides, and a drink for less than a buck. Plus, Tuesday at Roosters means a featured appetizer all day for just $2. Roosters will lighten your mood and not your wallet. And you can always enjoy your favorite sports on Roosters 40 TVs. Roosters at Pullman Square in Huntington. A fun, casual joint. You really can't get much for five bucks these days, unless... Is that a real song? I think she liked it. Your choice of sandwich plus all this for just five bucks is worth celebrating. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's Piggy Bag. Right there. Was in the spring, and 
is to facilitate student success in a variety of ways. Students know that somebody cares. They know that there's somebody on the other table that is willing to do everything they can to make them successful. Somebody can walk in the door not knowing what they want to do and they can talk through what their options might be. There's a, a program or a pathway for you here at Mount West. We have a pathway for, for anybody. Barbersville Fall Fest 2023 is coming Wednesday, September 27th through September the 30th. Carnival rides Wednesday through Saturday and the parade on Thursday. Friday night, September 29th, it's Burning Ridge and Madhouse. And on Saturday, September 30th, the Village of Barbersville welcomes country superstar Chris Cagle Live. All the chicks dig it. Chris Cagle. Oh, Laredo. There'll be arts and crafts, the car show, and so much more. Fall Fest 2023 in the village of Barbersville, September 27th through the 30th. 
Did you know when you send or receive a text message, you take your eyes off the road for five seconds? At 55 miles per hour, that's like driving more than the length of a football field blindfolded. As a result, thousands of people die every year in crashes related to distracted driving. That's why we're cracking down on people who text or use their smartphones while driving. We would rather you cross the goal line alive. Law enforcement officers write tickets to save lives. Don't text and drive. Planning for a funeral is never easy, and selecting the right mortuary can be important. Family-owned and operated for over six decades, our family has helped other families going through the most difficult time. Chapman's Mortuary and Crematory can help you plan arrangements today or offer a pre-need funeral plan in line with your intimate wishes. And now, we provide Huntington's only on-site crematory. Call us for a free consultation. Chapman's Mortuary and Crematory, serving the Tri-State for over 60 years. Looking for fair prices, professional service, and the most customer-friendly shop in the tri-state? Then Freedom Gun and Pawn in Lavalette is your kind of place. Freedom Gun and Pawn has the best selection of new, pre-owned, and vintage firearms, plus a large stock of ammo and accessories. Freedom Gun and Pawn is everything you want in a gun and pawn shop. Freedom Gun and Pawn, proud to support our local high schools and communities. Across from Food Fair and Lavalette, online at freedomgunandpawn.com. PCB is a long-standing partner in our community. We're your neighbors, your teammates, and your friends. And we want to be your banker. We're a team of experienced professionals focused on the personal, residential, and business needs of our community. We make decisions locally, quickly, and with your best interest in mind. We care about you, your family, your business, and your goals. We're PCB, a proud community bank. Open an account with us today.
Welcome back, everybody. As we get you ready for kickoff here tonight, it is Cabell Midland and Ironton. Let's go to the field. Hear from the referee. Eagles hands. The only National Guard is tail. Okay? Who would like to call the coin? Your call, sir. Tails. Okay. Call's tails. I want to hit the ground. Okay? Call's tails. It is tail. Football. We want the ball. I think I heard right. Cabell Midland got the toss. Is that right, Kent? They got the toss. That is correct. They won the toss. Captain Caden Bowen called it, elected to receive. So Midland will start on offense. All right, perfect. All right, we'll check in with Kent Bryson coming up here more on the sidelines tonight as we get ready to roll here. All right. You ready for this? Yeah, are you kidding? Everybody else is ready. <laughs> Captains for tonight's game for the Cabell Midland Knights, Michael Lunsford, Caden Bowen. You also have Cannon Lewis and Braylon Ryder. For the Ironton Fighting Tigers, Bailey Thacker, Zane Williams, Noah Patterson, and Ian Farrow. The Fighting Tigers in their black jerseys, the white pants, the orange and black stripe, and the orange helmets. And the Knights are in their all whites with the pewter stripe, or the black and red stripe down the pants, and their pewter helmets with the block M on the side. All right, here we go. We'll get ready. It means offensively for the Knights. They'll get ready to roll here, and they will set up at the offensive line. Matt Edwards will be up there, but Braylon Ryder will set up that offensive line in the center spot. Ben Williams and Edwards will be the guards. The tackles will be Mason Ramsey, and Caleb uh, Parlier is on the, uh, on the strong side of things. When you look at the lineup, three sophomores, two juniors on that offensive line for Cabell Midland here tonight. Michael Lunsford will be the tight end here tonight. We'll see Caden Pauley out there. Of course, the quarterback, Robert Shockey, will be out there along with Curtis Jones Jr. We'll see Cannon Lewis out there, Landon Nida, also Miles uh, Meter as well as we'll also see Caden uh, Bowen uh, working his way from the split inside of things. So the Knights will get ready to roll and they will take the football and they will go from right to left. Back deep for Cabell Midland. Nida will be towards the near side up on the far side for Cabell Midland. It will be wearing those white jerseys like Chris talked about and it will be Jaden Branch who will be on the far side. Branch and Knight have both been both been threats for the Knights. They're both just quick on their feet, and uh, Landon Knight is more especially one of those kind of scrappy guys when, when he gets a hold of the football. Well, let's get ready to kick things off here in the border, or the battle at the border. Ironton lines up tight. Football set at the 40-yard line, and they will 
kind of rush up and then fall back, and they will get lined up. Kind of one of those fake deals where they can do one of those onside kicks. But now they'll get things set up. Now they got to get rolling because the clock rolls. And the play clock is down to 13 as they kick it off. Far side goes over to Branch, takes a bounce at the 10. He'll pick it up at the 5. Far side gets across the 15, cuts back to the middle, and he'll be wrapped up and brought down there at about the 17-yard line. And good defensively there by Ironton to make the stop for the Ironton Fighting Tigers. It will be Cabell Midland offensively here for the first time tonight. And I think, believe on there was Tatum Moore on the stop for the Ironton Fighting Tigers. Also Jesse Copas on the stop for Ironton, but a nice job at Branch. Uh, letting the ball come to him. He gets almost out to the 20-yard. That'll be uh, our first look at the Capitol Midland offense. And they're going to go spread with two wide outs either way. Jones, a single setback. Nida comes in motion towards the near side. Shockey out of the pistol. Hands off Jones. Right side, hit at the line of scrimmage. Falls forward, gets across the 20. Works his way up to about the 24-yard line. Nice pickup for Curtis Jones on the first play from, uh, from scrimmage. He always He's just one of those guys who keeps those legs pumping, and he picks up four or five yards. They're going to give him five to bring up second down and five. Pauley splits to the far side. Where's old number zero out there? Nida out there as well, too. Caden Bowen splits towards the near side, the wide side of the field. Shockey breaks the huddle, gets that young offensive line set up as the Knights go from right to left. Jones in the backfield, fakes the handoff to him. It's Shockey calling his own number. Jones with the lead block, gets across the 25, works his way up to about the 27-yard line. It'll bring up third and about two and a half coming up here for Cabell Midland. They just really piled on uh, Shockey, and the tackle was made by uh, Ironton's Noah Patterson to finish off that play. He gets a couple yards. It's going to bring up about third and two for the Knights. The Knights looking back to the far side. Miles Meter will be split out to the right. Three wideouts to the right side for the Knights. Ball middle of the field. Pauly split, or Bowen split towards the near side. Out of the pistol, it's Shockey. Play clock. Off in front of him. It'll be a pitch over to Jones. Right side has open real estate. Enough for the first down and then some. 30, 35, up to about the 36-yard line. Needed three. He picked up about nine. First and ten for Cabell Midland. Noah Patterson out there on coverage for the Fighting Tigers. A nice textbook tackle. Wrapped him up around the hips and legs and brought Curtis Jones down. But not before the Knights picked up that first down. He got a lot of real estate out he there did. as soon as he got that pitch. Two wide outs either way. Shockey out of the pistol. Has Jones lined up behind him about two yards off his backside. Ball far hash mark. Takes a snap. Steps up into the pocket. Looking to fire back towards the near side. Has a receiver. Goes up. Tipped out. Incomplete. Pass intended on the near side for Cabell Midland for Miles Meter. And the senior went up. Got a hand on it. But good job defensively by the Fighting Tigers to knock it down. Raylan Sturgill on coverage for the Fighting Tigers, and he came up, knew that he had good coverage on the Cabell Midland receiver, and a nice play defensively for Sturgill and the Ironton Fighting Tigers. Both of them got their hands on it there. It's a nice ball. Mike Meters had a shot at it. It's a nice thrown ball by Shockey. 10-0-1 left to play here in this opening quarter. No score. Opening drive for the Knights. Three wide out split wide, uh, split to the right. That's the short side of the field. Shockey now under pressure. Rolls back towards the near side. Gets a good backside block. Trying to make something out of nothing. He goes all the way back to the 25 to the 30. Trying to turn up field. He's forced out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Could have been a loss of about 10. It's going to go down as a loss of 5. And he saved what would have been something worse. The downfall is now it's going to be third and a country mile to pick up the first down. Maddox Markle was able to finally chase Shockey out of bounds. And, again, like you said, Shockey was able to, to, to get something, to make a little something out of what was going to be a huge loss for the Knights. It'll be uh, third and 14. Three to the right, single to the left, short side of the field. Shockey out of the pistol. Jones in the backfield. Delayed hand off to Jones up the middle. Cuts it back towards the near side, breaks the tackle. 35 to the 40, turns up field, lowers a shoulder penalty flag coming in from the backside. And he gets all the way down to about the 30, to the 45 yard line. And we will check the penalty flag. We got holding against the Knights. And decision time now for the Ironton Fighting Tigers. Do they want to? Have him uh, redo the play, push him back, and go third down again or bring up fourth down. Sturge on coverage there for the Fighting Tigers. But, again, those penalties fundamentally, we talked about that last week that killed Midland. If this becomes a theme in this ballgame, I can assure you that Ironton is going to take full advantage. One correction, I said holding. It's a block on the back. So it's 10-yard penalty. They'll go back and we'll replay Spot. third down. Puts the football down at the 29-yard line. Ball near hash mark. Single wide out near side. 
Trips to the right. Shockey looks and sees three down linemen for the Fighting Tigers. Nickel package, actually dime package in for the Tigers. Shockey under pressure, rolls out. He's going to be hit once, hit twice, rolls out near side, breaks another tackle, breaks another tackle at the 20, turns up to the 25 and gets leveled at the 27-yard line. A huge hit coming in there from Sean Terry, and it'll bring up fourth and long for the Knights, an oncoming punting unit. It looked like Jesse Copas and Aiden Lane were going to take Shockey down, but he's able to squirt loose, and Sean Terry, like you said, just put a huge hit on Shockey here on this near sideline to finish that playoff. It's going to be third and a mile, or fourth and about 17. Fourth and a mile, fourth and 17 as they come out of the huddle. Midland is going to be in pump formation. The big thing is uh, they, um, you know, you, t you teach technique when you tackle, yeah. and that's put the face mask right. in between the numbers and between the shoulders, and yep. that's exactly what he did right there. Yeah, Sean Terry with a nice textbook tackle, fundamentally all the way around for the Titan Tigers. Terry back deep to receive the punt from Shockey. Low line driver It's going to get a good roll. Across the 35, picked up at the 30. Near side for Terry. He's going to be hit at the 40. Breaks the tackle there, 45 to the 50. Near side, gets out in Midland territory. 30, 25, nobody's going to get him. Go Jones, on. the last one to the 10, to the 5. Going to the corner of the end zone, touchdown. Ironton fighting Tigers. Miles Meters had him wrapped up early, and he got loose and goes and hits pay dirt at the 7.59 mark of the first quarter. Ironton strikes first. 65, is that about right? 65 yards. 7.59 left to play here in this first quarter. Midland on top. Or excuse me, Ironton on top. They're going to do the muddle huddle now for the Fighting Tigers. They're going to send the line off to the left, left leaving one tackle, one center, and they're going to run it towards the near side, trying to go for the two-point conversion. Stretches out, gets into the end zone, touchdown. Excuse me, check that, two-point conversion, and it's 8-0. And on the run that time is Sherrick, Braden Sherrick, who lines up with the split end, but he's also the backup quarterback. All right, we'll take a break. It's Ironton 8, Midland nothing. We're back after this 30-second timeout right here on 97.9 The River. Shrek. Huh? Shrek. 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 For Cabell Midland, they were forced back into a fourth down and punting the football. Line driver picked up on the run, and it was Terry that took it all the way in, broke a couple of tackles, and he went from the near side of the field, crossing the field at the 40, and went all the way to the far side pylon and got into the end zone. Miles Meters had him wrapped up, and uh, Sean Terry was able to get loose and uh, go the distance. 70 yards on a return, wow. And like you said, their offense has, has not even been on the field yet, so... The Iron Fighting Tigers set to kick it away here. David Fields will kick it for the Fighting Tigers. I think every time I see the see a team do that, I think they, they might trip and actually hit the ball <laughs> right. just a little bit. <laughs> right, just knock it, it off the It gets that close. <laughs> Branch far side, not in near side. Here goes the kick. It's a end over end, short kick, going to be fielded at the 10-yard line. Make it the 9-yard line here by Branch up the middle. 20-25, breaks the tackle, spins around to 30, still on his feet to the 35, works his way up to about the 37-yard line. We'll see if the Knights can answer back here this time and get some points for themselves. And we got 7.51 left to play here in this opening quarter. It's Ironton 8, Cabell Midland nothing. Branch on the Knights return out to the 38-yard line. Tatum Moore finishing off uh, Branch to stop the uh, return. All right, try it once again here for Capital Midland. Shockey out of the pistol, hand off to Jones up the middle, breaks one tackle at the line, still keeping his feet rolling, falls forward, gets across the 40, works his way up to about the 42-yard line. Pick up a three on the play, brings up second or second down and about seven. Make it six. I keep moving the stick around over there a little bit. I was watching, <laughs> I was confused too. The tackle was made by uh, Ironton's Austin Bump. Check in with Kent Bryson coming up here in just a bit. He's on the sidelines tonight. Packed house. 
good crowd Great here tonight. Great crowd here. Here goes Shockey. Sets up under pressure. Now hit in the backfield. Spins out of that pressure. Can't get away from the second one. He will be wrapped up and brought down at about the 26-yard line, 27-yard line. Huge loss on the play. Jesse Copas and Noah Patterson were both in on that on that coverage, but again, a big sack. They put heavy pressure on Shockey in both of their series on offense here tonight. Well, what happened on that, it was kind of one of those count deals where the lineman yep. held his block and then rolled out and was setting up a screen, and he ran it just a little, held on to it just a little bit too long. Came in unabated. Third and 20 on this uh, third down. Another big down here for the Knights, trailing 8 nothing. Shockey rolls out to his right. Now right. cut back near side, looking to step up, fires the football, has a receiver, making the grab at the 45 inside, iron to territory, and he will put a knee down as he crosses the 50, trying to make the cut. And a nice gain, nice pass catch that time by Cabell Midland, and somebody wearing number seven, and I don't have That's a jersey. That's what I was looking at. <laughs> hey, well, I'll have to get Kent. By the way, Kent, we'll, maybe you could shout, follow up with us, find out who's wearing number seven tonight yeah. for us. Seven is actually Goodrich, uh, Javon Goodrich. He alternates between seven and 23, depending on whether they're wearing the reds okay. or the whites. So that uh, is Goodrich. All right, Goodrich. All right, thank you very much. Goodrich split out to the right, hand off to Jones up the middle, powers his legs across the 45 and down to about the 42-yard line. Goodrich that we're talking about there. We're in number seven here tonight. 5'11", 180-pound senior. Finishing off that tackle was Jesse Copas. We've called his name a lot for the Fighting Tigers here this evening. Lunsford will switch over towards the near side. And the handoff is to Jones near side. Jones upended as he gets across the 40 and close. gets close to the first down. Let's see if they give him the good mark here. And it looks like he might have gotten beyond that 39-yard line. Lunsford gave him a nice block as he cut through that hole in the line, but it's going to be awfully close to a first down. They've, well, one official on the far sideline waved him, and the other one is saying, wait, and now they're going to finally move. Yeah, it is a first down. So the Knights are moving the football down the field, looking at first and 10, now from the 39-yard line. Two wideouts to the right, single to the left. Out of the pistol formation once again. This time Lunsford lines up on the right side. Shockey sets the play in motion, slaps his hands, takes a snap, pass back over to the right. And too far out in front, looking over on that far side of the line for Cabell Midland, trying to hook up over there on the left side to uh, Nida, and it goes incomplete. I think if he wanted that one back, he would have liked it because yeah. that was just a little too far out in front. Yeah. Just let him out just a little too far. And Shockey, you know, we've, we've talked about his ability to sling the ball around a little bit. And in those, in those first couple of games we talked about, that's a season full of passing for Cabell Midland normally. 5-0-1 left to play in this opening quarter. It's been all Knights offense on the field, and the Knights trail 8 nothing. Here goes Shockey. Takes a snap. Quick pass near side over to Jones. He's hit behind the line of scrimmage. It's going to go down for a loss of about two on the play. Third down, 12 coming up. Shockey had to kind of back up, then found Jones open, but Braylon Sturgill able to finish him off in the backfield. A loss of two or three on that play is going to bring up a long third down for the Knights. Third and about 12. From the 41. Lunsford will go out on the far side. Meter will check back in. They'll go three wide outs to the right, wide side of the field. Knight is split out near side. Chalky out of the pistol once again. Jones lined up behind him. No tight end set. Slaps the hands. Quick pass back over to the right side. Knight makes the grab. He'll be stood up at the line, and that's it. No gain. Matter of fact, he lost. More yards on that one. Put it down for negative three. They're going to put him all the way back to the 44-yard line. Josh Johnson was all over Landon Nida. He, he just watched the eyes of the quarterback, and as he was tossing out to Nida, he, Josh Johnson was right there all over Nida for the loss. It's going to be fourth and a mile for the Knights, fourth and about 15. Timeout by the official for an equipment adjustment on one of the Ironton players. Fourth and 15, like Chris talked about, and – Decision time here for Coach Luke Sammons. Do you want to try to punt it to pin him back, or you want to try to go for it on fourth down here at the 44-yard line? I almost think maybe you want to pin him back a little bit, but we'll see. Looks like the Knights are going to go for it, but the thing is, though, Shockey is also the punter, so we'll have to see how it shakes out. White outs either way, ball far hash mark, out of the pistol, fourth down, 15 coming up. Shockey takes a snap, 
Steps up into the pocket. Fires back towards the near side. Has a receiver making the grab. Good enough for the first down. Move the chains. It's Caden Bowen. He went up, got the ball, brought it down. First and ten for the Knights in a big fourth down conversion. Caden Bowen with a great reception from Shock. He gets 15 yards and more to move the sticks for the Cavalman and the Knights. Finishing off the play there for the, for the uh, Tigers was Aris Pittman. Had two receivers in that area for the Cabell Midland, and he was able to come out with it. Met, uh, meters was out there too. But first and ten, see, I, you don't listen to me. I wouldn't I'd, I'd <laughs> pin them deep, but hey, went for it. Right? Saw something I didn't see. Two wide outs either way. Hand off Jones up the middle, gets up in, and I think he actually tripped he, over his own player. Yeah, he did. He, he tripped over Bla uh, Braylon, not Braylon Ryder. It was actually number 53. Uh, par, uh, that Parlin. is uh, Caleb Parlier. Yeah. But, yeah, he was tripped up by his own player. Didn't really have much of a hole that time. Had to make it a little something. He got a yard, just about a yard out of the second nine as they come out of the huddle. Two wide outs right, single wide out left. Here goes Shockey running the option to his right. Keeps it himself, turns up field, and nice spin move. Gets across the 25 and down to about the 22-yard line. It's going to be about three yards shy of the first down. Third down coming up now for the Knights. Upended by Maddox Markle and also in on that tackle was Austin Bump for the Fighting Tigers. Clock rolling down 218, 217, 216. Left to play in the opening quarter. Knights trailing by eight. Eight nothing to score. Knights going from right to left. Offset pistol. There goes handoff to Jones, and Jones going to get upended. He'll only get a yard, so two yards shy of the first down, so fourth down coming up again for Cabell Midland. Yeah, okay, the, the Fighting Tigers did a nice job on coverage that time, finishing off uh, uh, Curtis Jones in on that tackle. That time, again, was was uh, Jesse Copas. We've talked about him a number of times. He's made several tackles here this evening. But they've done a nice job kind of containing that run, spying Curtis Jones. Fourth down and three coming up. Knights went forward on fourth down last time, and a timeout's going to be taken. Well, I think they're resetting the, the play clock. We have. Yeah. There it is. So they restarted the play. There was actually no play clock in the direction that the Knights were going to our left. There was one to the right yeah. down here. All right, so they'll restart it. The official's waiting to restart it. Matter of fact, he never starts it, and then we'll roll. All right. Here goes Shock. He steps in the pocket, looking to cut back, spins around, trying to stretch out, and he's going to come up short. They're going to turn it over on downs. On the tackle was Austin Bump. Shockey did as much dancing as he could out there to try to make a little something out of that run and pick up that first down, but he actually is going to lose a yard, and like Jason said, they're going to turn it over on downs. Shockey did all he could to try to pick up positive yards, but just was not going to happen. All right, we'll switch sides now for the first time tonight with a minute 14 left to play in the opening quarter. We're going to see the Ironton offense coming out. Billy Thacker will be the quarterback here on the season, 422 yards passing, six touchdowns, no interceptions. Runs the ball pretty well, too. He's got 153 yards rushing the ball this season. An entire junior, take that back, four of the five across the offensive line are juniors. Noah Patterson, the lone senior, he is the Eastern Michigan recruit. Wishbone. Thacker up underneath center, handoff, third man through on the near side. He's going to stay on his feet, gets across the 25, and they're going to say he's going to be wrapped up and brought down there at the 25-yard line. Midland defense did a nice job swarming uh, the back. Not much going, two or three yards on that carry, but our first look at this, uh, our first real look at this Ironton Fighting Tiger offense. I believe that was Zane uh, Williams there Zane on Williams. the carry. Under a minute left to play in the opening quarter. Ironton on top, 8 nothing. Second down, 7 coming up for Ironton. Going from left to right. Uniforms reminiscent of Cleveland Browns. I think Cincinnati right. Bengals combo. There we go. Fakes the handoff. Under pressure. Rolls out to his left. He's going to be wrapped Lunsford. up and brought down. Lunsford finishes him off. Yeah, it comes down with a Ball's big Ball's on the stop. turf, and somebody came out with it. They did. That's somebody right. coming out with it was Ray Way Williams. It's a turnover. The Knights have the football. That is awesome indeed. And that was Lunsford that came in with a big stop. And it was a big hit coming in for the Knights. Lunsford ripped it out of his arm, and it goes into his hands. That is a legit play. He was, he was still in play and then comes out with the turnover. It's a huge opportunity now for Cabell Midland. Nice field position for the Knights and a great job by that Cavalier defense. Lunsford and Ray Ray pairing up to take that one away from the Fighting Tigers. They've got a shot here to put some points on the board. Great field position. 
We'll see what the Knights can do here. And the timeout's going to be taken, I believe, by Cabell Midland. Breaking the action. We'll step aside ourselves. It is Cabell Midland trailing 8-0. We're back after the 60-second break here on 97.9 The River. Our goal is to provide you with the best automotive experience. From our state-of-the-art facilities, amenities, and certified staff, we call family. You'll be offered the best experience you deserve. We take pride in our focus for customer care, bringing the best quality and support for all of our customers' needs. What are you waiting for? It's your time to get behind the wheel with Thornhill. Get started now at thornhillautomotive.com. Just tag it at Thornhill, where it's all here for you. US 119 Chapmanville and Logan, WV to Belfry, Kentucky. I care. I care. I care. I care. I care. It doesn't matter how big or small your problem is, we want you to know that we're all in this together. At Cabell County Schools, we want everyone in our school community to know that they belong and that we care. Out of the timeout, the Knights take over after the fumble. They go with a full house lineup, double tight end set, quick pitch to the far side. The Jones turns up field, gets across the 20. He'll get up end as he works his way down to about the 16-yard line. Pick up a five, second down and five coming up. We'll check in real quick with Kent Bryce and Kent. Uh, one of the things that we noticed in the first couple of offensive series, it seemed as if Ironton was getting a lot of pressure, particularly in the interior. We thought that Midland would go to this heavy set a little bit earlier but I anticipate that this will be the offense that you're going to see at least while they're in this sort of red zone situation right. because they want to use that triple-A depth to actually wear down the smaller Ironton Fighting Tigers. All right, Kent. Garvey, a little Gatorade there. Cool down. We go to the second quarter. It's Ironton 8, Cabell Middle nothing. 60-second break right here on 97.9 The River. That's a quick first quarter. Yeah. They say our most precious resource is time. We only have so much, and yet sometimes we just want to speed things up. And sometimes we don't want a moment to ever end. And this time, all the seconds, minutes, hours, and days you'll have at Marshall University will feel just like that, made up of moments that become the recipe of your life. Championship level athletics, communities that become family, classes that become laboratories of growth and experience, new perspectives, plenty of challenges, and some well-earned wins. Reflect on what's been, but anticipate what's to come. Now's the time. In fact, now is your time. So how will you use this time? How will you meet the moment? Marshall University, we're ready when you are. We'll switch sides of the field. The Knights go from left to right. It's the uh, fake handoff. It's Shockey. He'll keep it up the middle. Gets across the 10. Good enough for the first down. It'll be first and goal for Cabell Midland inside the 10-yard line. Braylon Sturgill finishing off Shockey. Just kind of really wrapped up his ankle and, and pulled him down to the turf. Otherwise, Shockey could have gotten into the end zone. But this is the first time Midland has been in the red zone of the Fighting Tigers. A great opportunity here from the 16-yard line for, or check that, the 9-yard line uh, for the Knights. This was all set up by a turnover and a big hit by Michael Lunsford. And the turnover with the Knights and coming out with it back then was met, uh, meters. And this sets things up. Now Ironton showing blitz. Here goes Shockey. Rolls out, left side, cuts back right, gets a block. And now under pressure is going to be wrapped up and brought down. Just got into heavy traffic. They're able to finish it off. Uh, Shockey was Jesse Copas. But not, not before there was a pile of people. And really Shockey had nowhere to go. Rolled out, had the pressure, and was trying to cut back, but he just cut back right into yep. right into that line. All right, second and goal now. The football is placed all the way back to the 16-yard line. Lunsford will go out. They'll bring in more wide receivers to spread the field. Ramsey and Wright are really just trying to protect their quarterback, and they got jammed up, and, and Copas was right there to make the tackle for the Iron Fighting Tigers. Two wide outs either way. 
Out of the pistol formation is Shockey. Here comes the blitz from Ironton. Delayed handoff oh, to Jones good. all by himself up the middle. 5-10, touchdown. Cabell Midland, a 16-yard touchdown run by Curtis Jones, Jr. The Knights on the scoreboard for the first time at the 10-38 mark here in this second quarter. Line did a great job opening up a hole for Curtis Jones. He put a stiff arm out as he got around the five-yard line and was able to scamper in the end zone from 16 yards out. A great run for Curtis Jones to hit pay dirt for the Cabell Midland Knights at the 10-38 mark of the second quarter. It'll be an extra point coming up here now for Tony Hornbuckle. Jared Nethercutt, the holder. Shockey is the uh, – Nethercutt is the snapper. Shockey is the holder. It splits the uprights. It is good. 8-7 our score. 10-38 left to play here in this first half. We're back after the 60-second timeout right here on 97.9 The River. Actually, Lyon did a nice job opening that hole up for him that well. time. can't get much for five bucks these days unless is that a real song i think she liked it your choice of sandwich plus all this for just five bucks is worth celebrating choose wisely choose wendy's piggy bag the knights answer they are now on the scoreboard they trail eight seven as the knights will get ready to kick things off hornbuckle will go from left to right on the kickoff back deep is terry over on the far side and on the near side, it will be Pittman. Actually, now they'll switch. It'll be a short sky kick going far side, field at the 35-yard line, and it will be wrapped up and brought down there at about the 36, make it the 37-yard, 36-yard line. Copas took the kick in for the Iron Fighting Tigers and not much on the return, as Jason said. They'll start their drive out from about the 40. They're going to put them on the 47-yard line officially. Knights last time got some good defensive pressure in there, forced the fumble, and then capitalized with it when we changed sides of the field for second quarter and went into the end zone. It's an 8-7 ball game with 10-34 left to play first half. Ball at the 37. Thacker will go out of the shotgun this time, actually out of the pistol. Trips to the left. We got a penalty flag. I think we got too many players on the field. Oh, is it? We'll see. Sorry, we had, yep, moved the line. I thought I saw somebody jump, but then I started counting <laughs> me as immediately because yeah. you said, I'm like, well, you wait, really they're over. Like no, that. yeah. that's right. Yeah. No, not at all. <laughs> all right. So push them back five. First and 15 coming up. Here goes Thacker out of the shotgun. Under pressure, fires back near side. The receiver makes the grab near side, gets across the 30 to the 35, and penalty flag. I wonder if we're going to have uh, roughing the passer. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, did. I saw the flag come out. I was watching Sean Terry's uh, reception and, and uh, run out here. He did get some. He did get past the original line of scrimmage. He's going to be out around the 40-yard line, but the penalty flag came out pretty early in that play. play. It lays back around the 21-yard line. Yeah, they're going to get that on Lunsford on the 15 yards for roughing oh. the passer right as soon as he got rid of the football. Moving 15 for the end of the play, it'll be a first down. Those are the kind of mistakes that are so frustrating to a head coach and a coordinator because those are just fundamentally terrible decisions by your football players that you've taught all camp and all summer and, and week to week. That's a huge penalty yeah. when you add to it and the 15 yards in the back end that puts the football down at the 45-yard line. Ball near hash mark, two wide outs right, single wide out left. Out of the gun, back off set to the right. Here goes... Thacker rolls out to his right, trying to cut it back across the middle. He goes nowhere. A bunch of white jerseys in there to make the stop. And I'll tell you who was there. Cannon Lewis was the initial hit, and he finished off Thacker at a big sack for the Cabo Middle Knights. That's a loss of about uh, two yards on the play. It's going to bring up second down and 12. 
Yeah, that's a big snack. Cannon Lewis was right there, and then you saw a bunch of white jerseys just converge on Thacker to finish that playoff for the loss. So a lot of us would love to see Cannon Lewis play around here, but oh, he's man. heading down to, to Raleigh to play at NC State after this year, already committed. Our good buddy Todd Goble coaching down there. Yeah, coming back home here to, to recruit, right? Quick yep. pass on the play action. It goes incomplete, and the receiver – Took a big old hit from the backside that time defensively for Cabell Midland coming in with the big hit. It was Salmons, Mason Salmons on the stop, forcing the incomplete pass. Check that. It was not Zach Salmons. Ramey. That was Ramey. Zach yeah. Ramey. That's right, Ramey in there. Yeah, Ramey did a nice job on coverage there for the Knights, and now a little confusion on the on the Ironton sideline as they're switching in and out personnel. Now they'll finally get back to the line of scrimmage. Third down, 12, three wideouts near side, single wideout far side. No tight ends. Here goes Thacker underneath center. Quick pass behind the line of scrimmage, looking to set up the flea flicker, passing down to the field, looking for the receiver, tipped up and almost oh, intercepted. Wow. Pass was short. It was the receiver on the near side that made the grab on the near side. That was Shrek. Shrek was trying to pass back across his body to the far side of the field to and left Derry. it out. Yeah, and left it out there a little too short, almost intercepted by the Knights. But fourth down and 12 coming up, and on comes the punting unit for Ironton. Yeah, Shockey and Meters down there on coverage for the Knights, and like you said, almost interception. I think the ball actually went off of the back plate of the shoulder pads of, of uh, Shockey. You've got Branch deep to receive. See what the Knights can do with the football. They trail by one. On comes the punting unit. And a line drive punt. It's going to go back to Branch. Picks it up at seven, awesome. drops it, turns around, grabs it, and he'll be wrapped up and brought down there. Good job on the defensive coverage that time by Pittman for Ironton to wrap him up and bring him down. So no gain on the return. And it's going to be first and ten for the Knights deep in their own territory at the nine-yard line with 9.26 left to play here in this first half. The Knights trail by one. Branch was looking downfield before he ever had the ball in hand, and, and that's where he lost track of the football and, and, and bobbled it, and it ended up Pittman able to tackle him for that loss. A, uh, well, we got a penalty flag too. Oh, yeah, back at the 34-yard line. So blindside block, they're going to push him back half the distance. So they'll go from the that nine yard tough. line. <laughs> so talk about starting deeper in your own territory. Yeah, that's tough. Again, those those type of mistakes are the ones that end up really costing you. That and that that last penalty they had on on the uh, personal foul. Again, you choose up yardage. Puts it down to the four yard line. Big field in front of the Knights. Goodrich splits towards the near side. Knights trying to move personnel around. That was Caden Bowen coming in and giving the play to the sideline. You see Atlanta Nida kind of talking to Jaylen, Jaylen, Javon, Javon Goodrich over here on the near side. Shockey out of the snap, inside his end zone. Look at the pass deep downfield, looking for receiver. goes incomplete, and he was trying to stretch the receiver out at about the 45-yard line. He goes – a little too far out in front of him. Be second down and ten coming up for the Knights. Looking for Meters, a good ball, nice spiral pass down the middle of the field toward that left hash, and Meters just he just led Meters out a little bit too far. Too far out front. Second down, ten. Nine twenty-one left to play here in this first half. Entertaining first half so far. The Knights' offense been on the field quite a bit. Goodrich split near side. Full house backfield with Branch back there with Jones. And I think a time. Oh, got a penalty flag yeah, now. Yeah, there's flags in the back. Somebody moved. Yep. Another costly penalty here on the Knights. When, you, when you're that close to the goal line, those, those penalties, again, are just so frustrating. Those are the fundamental mistakes you cannot make in a game, especially in a game like this. Pauly will check back into the lineup. Goodrich will go out on the far side. So now second down and 13 coming up. Ball to two. Branch and Jones in the backfield. Here goes Shockey, keeps it himself, looking to turn up field. Breaks one tackle there, gets across the five, spins around, works his way up towards the 10, gets up to about the 12. Finally finishing him off was Josh Johnson for the Tigers. That last penalty was their, their fifth penalty of the night. Now second down and five coming up. So... At least they're not going to have their heels back on the goal line. A little breathing room for the Knights. Yep. A little bit to work with. Under nine minutes left to play here in this first half. 
All white uniforms tonight for Cabell Midland. Red numerals, pewter helmets, white pants for Ironton. Got the orange and black stripes down the side, black jerseys, orange stripes on the sleeves, orange helmet. Shockey, two wide outs right, single left. Shockey keeps it himself, hit hard as he works his way, but still keeps his feet moving, gets across the 15, good enough for the first down, move the chains. Huge hit that time by Tatum Moore, and Moore stood him up, but Shockey kept, kept his feet moving in the right direction. Legs kept churning, nice job by Shockey to keep the, keep the legs moving and get the first down. That was a big play for the Knights, a third and five. We talked about them getting a little breathing room, and now they move the sticks. That's a big first down right there. Keep this drive going. Keeps the clock rolling, too. Jockey just basically carried Tatum Moore down the field for a little bit. Pauly splits near side along with Nida. Here goes Jones, left side, trying to cut back, and he is going to be stood up. There's a bunch of those orange helmets there wrapped around him. And he might – nope, actually he's going to lose maybe a half a yard on the play. Second down and 11 coming up. Equipment. Somebody's got a little equipment problem down there at the line of scrimmage. They made, I think they're making somebody tie their shoe. Did you listen to Cabell Midland football on WMGA, Canova Huntington, along with Chris Tatum, Crimp Bryson. I'm Jason Toy. We've got Lowell Austin running things back in the studio. It's an 8 7 ball game right now with Ironton on top of Cabell Midland by one. Two wide outs right, wide side of the field. Out of the pistol. There goes Shockey. Rolls out near side. Has a receiver making the grab. Has to stretch out, and he gets up to about the 19 yard line. It's Nida on the grab, and it's a pickup of about only about five, maybe maybe actually make that three yards. Nida had to lay out to, to grab that one, a little, little out in front of him as well, but Curtis Jones with a nice block for Shockey to get, get time for Shockey to get the ball away. Third down and eight coming up. Eight and a half. Pauly splits out near side. Single wide out far side. Nida splits out near side, short side of the field. Out of the pistol, and a timeout's going to be taken here by Shockey. It's seen the play clock roll down. Breaking the action, we'll step aside ourselves. 6.41 left to play in this first half. Cabell Midland trails 8-7, 60-second break right here, 97.9 the river. Hi, I'm Wyatt Milo. I'm from Canova, West Virginia. When I'm back home, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that gold and blue pride at your local Parmar store. We are coming to your neighborhood soon. West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Maryland, we have you covered. Download the Parmar app and sign up for the Parmar Rewards card. Food, gas, groceries, and more, we are Gold and Blue Proud, and we are Parmar Stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Third down coming up here for the Knights and seven. Shockey rolls out to his left out of the timeout, steps up in the pocket, fires, has a receiver. It's going to be short of the first down. He made the grab at about the 24-yard line for Cabell Midland and making that reception for the Knights. It looks like that was it was Met, uh, Meters that made the grab. Braden Shrek finished off Meters there, but it is going to be shy of the first down by two or three yards, bring up fourth down for the Knights. A long two coming up. Do uh, Here's decision time now for Coach Luke Sammons. But you know what? They always like to go for it, they do. so we'll see. They clearly see something that we, <laughs> that we didn't, too, as they're they're deep in their own territory here at the 24-yard line. Needs to get right at the 26-yard line to pick up the first down. Trips to the left, short side of the field, and a timeout taken by Ironton this time. Another break in the action, 5.57 left to play. First half, Cabell Midland trails 8-7, 60-second break right here, 97.9 the river. They say our most precious resource is time. We only have so much and yet sometimes we just want to speed things up and sometimes we don't want a moment to ever end. And this time, all the seconds, minutes, hours and days you'll have at Marshall University will feel just like that, made up of moments that become the recipe of your life. 
championship level athletics, communities that become family, classes that become laboratories of growth and experience, new perspectives, plenty of challenges, and some well-earned wins. Reflect on what's been, but anticipate what's to come. Now's the time. In fact, now is your time. So how will you use this time? How will you meet the moment? Marshall University. We're ready when you are. Out of the timeout, it is Cabell Midland going for it on fourth down with about two. Full house line. They're going to go with the hard count, and a timeout's going to be taken by the Knights nice. and Shockey. So we'll keep it right here with 5.57 left to play here in this first half. And they were trying to draw them offside. Yeah. Let's, let's check in with Kent Bryson down on the field. Kent, we got a timeout opportunity here. We look over to the far side. We see a lot. I tell you what, sometimes we come here for Marshall games. This seems like a bigger crowd than we've seen at some Marshall games over the last couple of years. But nevertheless, a very good turnout here tonight. I guess Kent is uh, checking on something for us. Yeah, it's a great crowd, though. <laughs> how, what do you? How many? Th how many things here? I'm, I'm going to say. I'm going to say a good ten, maybe twelve. Yeah, I'd, I I thought we'd at least 10 here, and I think yeah. we're, we're very much of that. So what they've done is they, they've actually roped off the end zone yeah. to our right, so nobody's over there. Yeah. So you got all Ironton yep. here on the near side, the Ironton band to our left. Far side is Cabell Midland. They filled in the pretty good section there in the middle, and the band and the student section off to the right side of us towards the uh, scoreboard side of the end zone, the, uh, the south side of the end zone. And that brand-new scoreboard, that thing is absolutely beautiful. It looks great. It looks really good. <laughs> All right, here we go. The Knights called their final timeout. But they're going to come on and punt the football away. A little too deep in their territory to go for it on fourth down and about two and a half. So Shockey stands back at his own ten. He'll get ready to punt the football away. Back deep, it is Terry. Shockey gets rid of the football. Line drive. Terry's going to let it take a bounce. Gets a good midland nice bounce. Roll. Rolls across the 30, 25. Rolls across the 20. Inside to about the 18-yard line. Nice punt by Shockey. Lots of distance. Pins them back inside their own 20-yard line. That's a great punt. Go from the 24 back to the 18. Pretty darn good yep. right there. That will add to the average. <laughs> yeah, yes, it will. <laughs> Looks even better in this big field like, <laughs> instead of playing at Ironton or Midland. What do you have, the yards after catch? You got the yak. Yeah, Should, right. Do you get the roll after the I hit? I think so, yeah. yeah. I think you got to count that. That's a stat going Yeah, in. I think you have to. All right, here we go. 5.44 left to play, second quarter. It's Ironton 8, Cabell Midland 7. And the Fighting Tigers with the football now going from right to left. And they will have the football deep in their territory. Back at the 18-yard line. I formation lined up behind Thacker. Sends a man in motion near side, second man through. Cuts to his right. He's going to be stood up there as he gets to the 20-yard line. And of the 11 players for Cabell Midland, seven of them are in on the stop. <laughs> there's, a lot of, there's a lot of white jerseys there for sure. And the, uh, it, was the William, it was Williams, Williams. again, yeah, yeah. The sophomore. He's 30 carries for 175 yards, 5.8 average on the season. He's got three touchdowns. Yeah, he's done pretty well this season for young. That's the thing about it. When you look at Ironton's offense and and, the, and Trevin Pendleton, the crew chief, the crew chief sorry, I've been doing too much NASCAR, <laughs> know, right? the, the coach, they have uh, they have got a very young team. That's, a, that's the thing do. about it. So, All right, eye formation, ball with the, the snap carpet. here, and he has to go down to pick it up. That is Thacker, and he'll try to fall forward, and they're going to say he was down at the 21-yard line. So he got back to the – matter of fact, he might have lost. Hey, now they're going to give him, give they're gonna give him, give him a couple wow. yards. Yeah, he, I thought they were going to mark him back at about the 19, but no, they're going to yeah. give him forward progress across the 21, 21-and-a-half-yard line. Yeah, he was able to pick that ball back up. Ball hit, ball actually hit the turf, and he was able to recover and, and get a couple yards out of it. Third down coming up. Third and a long seven. Ball to 21. Three down linemen for the Knights. And high snap, pulled down. There, band pressure, steps up in the pocket, rolls out to his right for Thacker. Lewis and he's up, fumbles, football's on the turf. The Knights come up with it once again. I believe that's Nida. Nida came up with it. Cannon Lewis came up with the stop, and the Knights come away with another big turnover deep inside Ironton territory. Cannon Lewis with a big hit to pop that ball loose, and boy, did Landon Knight had come in from nowhere and pick that ball up and, and uh, recover the fumble. They're going to start on the 10-yard line. A great play for the Knights, a great stop for the Knights, and forcing another fumble was Cannon Lewis. Puts the football down at the 10-yard line, but actually it's just to the left of the 10 Nope, they're going to put the football back, actually back at the 
14-yard line. Still another great opportunity for the Knights. Cannon Lewis offset to the right. Handoff is to Jones. Jones powers his way through the 10, breaks a tackle to the 5, and powers his way down to about the 4.5-yard line. Braylon Sturgill rode uh, Curtis Jones back all the way down inside the 5-yard line, and now Midland is going to go back into that hurry-up offense. We saw this a good bit the first couple of weeks. Kind of that muddle huddle a little mm -hmm. bit, about three yards off the ball, and the officials now are going to stop it because they want to measure. <laughs> right. They're checking to see if it is a first down. It's close. It's real close. And they're gonna, they are going to bring the chains out to measure it. The football is just beyond to the right of the five-yard line, but is it enough to get about that four and a half? So we'll see where they place it here and see what they measure. Jones, man, just pulled through and, like I said, carried Sturgill down inside the five. He had Sturgill all over his back, but Jones able to make a nice run out of that backfield. And it is a little deceiving on this field because there is a crown. Yeah. So I can understand the, the measurement on this and seeing it, and first it will down. be a first down. The sight lines on this field, the way it's built to have the drainage, that, that, that crown can be a little deceiving when you're looking at that measurement. Do you remember how bad that crown used to be? Oh, yeah, very much <laughs> It so. was big. Yes. That was a huge crown on that field before they replaced the turf I gotta the first time. i got to admit one thing. I freaked out the first time that they pumped the water out to the parking oh. lot. <laughs> I, yeah. didn't, I was, I was yeah. out there, and I was like, where is all this coming from? <laughs> all right, here goes Shockey up underneath center. It's uh, Jones in the backfield. Hand off to him right side. Hits the line, spins around, and sticks it out, and he gets it in the end zone. Touchdown, Cabell Midland. Four-yard touchdown run this time for Curtis Jones, Jr., and the Knights go on top. Jones able to spin off of a spin off of a tackle and, and find his way to the end zone, but, boy, he just kept those legs turning. It looked like he was going to go down, but then he was able to spin off of that tackle and fall across the goal line. A, goal line. a nice job by Curtis Jones, Jr. Nice move by Jones. Here's the extra point. Kick is up, and it is good. The Knights go on top, 14-8. We're back after this 60-second timeout right here, 97-9, the river. Hi, I'm Wyatt Milo. I'm from Canova, West Virginia. When I'm back home, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We have that gold and blue pride at your local Parmar store. We are coming to your neighborhood soon. West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Maryland, we have you covered. Download the Parmar app and sign up for the Parmar Rewards Card. Food, gas, groceries, and more. We are Golden Blue Proud, and we are Parmar Stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Touchdown number two for Curtis Jones Jr. This one a four-yard touchdown run at the four yard at the four-minute mark, and the extra point was good by Hornbuckle. The Knights go on top for the first time tonight, 14 to eight, and another big turnover by the defense, forced turnover against the Ironton offense deep in the territory, and they were able to capitalize once again. Chris Cannon Lewis forced that fumble, uh, Landon Knight picks it up, and then Curtis Jones puts the exclamation mark on that four-yard touchdown run, and boy. All three of those guys, Cannon Lewis hit was so hard, and Curtis Jones just keeps those legs moving. Hornbuckle will kick it off, puts the ball in the middle of the 40-yard line. He'll go from left to right on the kickoff. Here's the approach, the kick, sky kick, back over to the far side once again. Catch, bounces off the head, shoulder pads, fielded by the receiver, brings it back across the 25, 30, and up to about the 32-yard line. And the, the receiver that time, Zane I believe, Williams. was it? Yep, Zane Williams, Zane Williams. Ray, Williams. Ray, Ray, Ray Ray finished him off. Uh, that time. Yeah, Williams had it bounce off his shoulder pad there, but he was able to pull it in. Got a little positive yards on it. So, first and ten now for Ironton. I think he was kind of looking downfield, too, before he actually pulled the ball in into the bread basket, looking downfield to try to make something out of it. It ends up bouncing off the shoulder pads. and uh, All the years we've done Midland football, when's the last time we saw one go deep on a kickoff? That's been a minute. Yeah. It's <laughs> been a minute. I can't remember yeah, back. It's so. been a minute. The Knights bringing Lunsford in last second defensively. This will be first and 10 now from the 33-yard line. Man in motion coming towards the near side for Ironton. Out of the shotgun. 
pass, penalty flag down, and pass complete towards the near side to Terry, and Terry cuts back to the 40 and works his way up to about the 42-yard line. We got an illegal motion against Ironton. Yeah, Terry actually able to make a little something out of that. He was caught early in that play, but found opened up his dance card and got down the sidelines, but it's going to be negated by this penalty. And the legal procedure. And they'll push him uh, back five, and we'll do it again. So first and 15 coming up now for Ironton. 3.45 left to play in this first half. Knights or Knights trailed 8-0. They've scored the last 14 points off turnovers. Out of the pistol formation, Williams, deep man, will now come in motion towards the near side. Here's the pass behind the line of scrimmage over towards Williams. Gets across the 30, turns up field of the 35, tripped up as he gets his way by Branch on the near sideline, and he gets back up to about the 40-yard line. Cannon Lewis and Landon Knight on coverage there as well as Branch to finish it off, but not before the pickup of about seven, six or seven yards for the Tigers. The umpire places the football at the 40-yard line. It'll be second down. And about three coming up out of the pistol once again. High snap pulled down, handoff once again to Williams. He's going to be pushed back. Cannon he, Lewis all over Zane Williams. They, the Knights have controlled the interior part of things here defensively tonight. It's been outside where Ironton's been able to get some points. Cannon Lewis shot that gap and was able to contain Zane Williams. Give Trace Adkins a little credit, too, on that one. He came in on the stop as well for Cabell Bidlin. You see 27 and 40 coming at you. You're, it just <laughs> makes you give that stutter step for sure. Third down coming up out of the I formation. Thacker up underneath center. Hand off second man through, and that is Williams, and he works his way. Nice spin move. Got enough for the first down. Move the chains as he works his way up to about the 44-yard line. That was uh, Gavin Hart, I think, on the carry that time, 22. Yep. Check that. Hart on the carry this time. That spin move got him the extra yardage. <laughs> it did. The I formation once again. Hard in that backfield. Also back there for is Copas as the fullback. Three-step drop. Fires back towards the near side. Receiver making the grab towards the near side. That's Terry trying to turn up field. Gets across the 50 inside Midland territory to about the 48-yard line. Branch in on coverage, Zach Ramey on coverage for the Knights as well. And you see Sean Terry lined up out there. That's always going to be an option for this Tiger offense. Shrek will split out to the far side. Terry towards the near side. The eye formation once again. Copas, that fullback, out of the eye. Here's a handoff, second man through. That is Hart, and Hart's going to get across the 45, gets enough of the first down, keeps the drive alive, stops the clock with a minute 41 left to play. Zach Ramey, Cannon Lewis on the stop there for the Knights. You can also credit Trace Adkins. He was in there as well. First and ten now for Ironton. And official stop play. Re that Is it play clock? Yeah, it's play clock. Oh, game clock. One minute, 34. Confusion with the, with the officials as he walks back up to the line of scrimmage. 134 is what they're asking for on the clock. So the confusion's on the game clock. They want the yeah. game clock at 134. It rests at 139. So they're trying to take five seconds off the clock. And the officials there said they'll start back on the official's whistle. And they're having to look at us to get the time. All right. <laughs> so that's the bad thing about it. They can't hear it. <laughs> Here's the, the official in there. All right, wide outside the way, eye formation once again. Here goes Thacker, two-step drop, fires back near side, and here's the grab on the near side as he goes out of bounds. That will be Terry once again, and stopping the clock as, did he get enough for the first down? Nope, he be got about a the, yard shy, yeah, he got two the, yard shy. He got to the 35-yard line branch and also Ramey on coverage over there. But again, like I said, if you see Sean Terry lined up, that might be where you want to tighten up your coverage <laughs> a little bit because they're looking. See if they do it again here. Terry split out towards the near side, handoff second man through. That is Hart, and Hart... We'll get across the uh, enough of the first down and gets down close to the 30. 
Stopping the clock with a minute 18 left to play in regulation here in this first half. Lonsford on the stop. Cannon Lewis there also uh, big number big number 6-3. That's Gage Ruley for the Knights. They got it placed. Fischl starts the clock once again. Down to a minute eight left to play. I formation. Ironton trying to get back the lead. Now under pressure, rolls out towards the near side. Thacker's going to be wrapped up and brought down. Pressure towards the near side. Penalty flags down. We'll stop the clock with 59 seconds left to play. Holding against the Tigers. Carson Gu on the stop for the Knights. And that holding call will walk that one back. Flags on the 30-yard line. Or flags on the 35-yard line, rather. They're going to sort it out. Official towards the near side. Going to get the fullback, Copus, on the hold. Copus. We've called his name a number of times for tackles. This is his first time he's called for a penalty this evening. Timeout taken by Ironton. We'll keep it right here. They're taking a 30-second timeout. With 59 seconds left to play here in this first half, it was all Ironton to start things off. Actually, it was Midland to start things off because they came out offensively. And uh, <laughs> it was the punt return for the touchdown for 70 yards. Yep. That put Ironton on top. They went for the two-point conversion and made it. And then the Knights have answered back after a couple of turnovers to take uh, things back on top, 14-8. Yeah, to eight. Defense has really contained this uh, Tiger offense here in the second quarter. Matter of fact, Curtis Jones scored both of those touchdowns for the Knights in the second quarter. They've been pretty silent offensively, except for a few a few uh, bright spots. You, you know, Sean Terry and, and also uh, – uh, the running back Hart has come in and made, you know, move the sticks for him a few times, but mostly silent here in this second quarter for this Tigers offense. Update for you, folks, from Greenville. It is Marshall 17, East Carolina 13 in the fourth quarter. Trips to the right, single wide out towards the near side. Out of the pistol formation once again, it is Thacker. Since a man in motion towards the near side, that is Terry. Here's a snap. Thacker now under pressure. Rolls out to his right. Has open field. Launcher. Turns up field. Cannon Lewis is there. It's going to wrap him up and bring him down at the sideline. They're going to say he went out of bounds in front of the Midland bench. But it'll be a pickup of only a couple yards on the play after the penalty. Made it to the 36-yard line before he was taken out of bounds by Cannon Lewis. And, boy, Cannon Lewis and, and also uh, 41 was on coverage, too, over there. Carson Gu for the Knights. I think he's rolling out and seeing 27 who's been <laughs> yeah. in his face all night. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to hurry and get to this sideline as quick as I can. It's probably a, sm it's probably a smart move. <laughs> smart option. Solid option. Ball far hash mark. Placed at the 35-yard line. Two wideouts near side. Single to the right. Thacker out of the shotgun. Takes a snap. Looks the pass. Sets up the screen in the middle. Oh, wow. And he's wrapped up and brought down. Yeah. Good two, job seven. defensively. Kevin, uh, it's it's uh, once again back Cannon Lewis in there. Zane Williams got the screen pass. Lewis did not bite on it. And he wrapped him up and brought him down. Got back to the uh, the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Zane Williams is probably wishing he could have made it to the sideline because Cannon Lewis absolutely pummeled him. Ironton quickly back to the line before the Knights were even set, rolling out towards the near side in the pass, and the catch is made down the near side by Terry. Turns up field, gets to the 20-yard line, good enough for the first down. The Knights got to hurry up and get set. They were not nope. even in position when that snap happened. Ironton quickly back on the line of scrimmage. Looking to make it roll here on the first down. It's 18 seconds left to play. One timeout remains for Ironton, and they're going to kill the ball to stop the clock with 15 clicks left here in this first half. Branch on that tackle there of Sean Terry, but again, they were just not set. Lucky to actually contain Branch and save that touchdown. They were in that hurry up for sure. Sean Terry uh, and Thacker were able to take advantage of that, play a little pitch and catch, and put them down inside the red zone of the Knights. Trevin Pendleton, the head coach for Ironton, giving the final play call here. Second down and 10 after they killed the ball. Out of the pistol formation, here goes Thacker. Takes a snap, rolls to his right, looking to pass downfield. Now nothing there, turns back, comes back across the middle. He'll be wrapped up and brought down, and the final Cannon timeout's Lewis. going to be taken. Cannon Lewis comes in now with the stop. <laughs> It'll be the final timeout taken by Ironton with seven seconds left to play here in this first half. Cannon Lewis with the initial hit. Braylon Ryder coming in on the assist to finish off Thacker. And Cannon Lewis has just swarmed that ball all night long. We'll keep it right here on this timeout for halftime. Recap scoring in the first half. We'll check in with Kent Bryson on the sidelines here when we hit halftime. And a pretty good matchup. We figured we'd have a good one here tonight. And so far, it has uh, paid dividends on that here in the battle at the border. 
here for the first time at the Jones C. Edwards Stadium in James F. Edwards Field here at Marsh University. First ever high school football game here at this facility. What a, what a great thing for the community, though. Look, you've yeah. got two, two cities very close to one another, from right across the room with one another. There's no reason this shouldn't happen more often. No, not at all. And and like we were saying in the pregame, if you weren't listening to the pregame, we we're complimenting Christian Spears and the university on, on, on getting this together and letting this happen here. If you want to talk about kids and recruiting kids and giving them experience, <laughs> what better way to get a kid interested in Marshall University than something like this right here? Yeah, exactly. This is beautiful. The fans are loving it. Good crowd. Huge crowd. Nobody is left in the town of Ironton tonight. I can <laughs> no, tell you that. No. Pistol formation once again. Here goes Thackard. High snap, pulled down, looking to step up. Now, no pressure. Now rolls out. Oh, has man. a receiver wheeled out of the backfield, and he's going to be stopped short of the end zone as time expires. Wow. They, the Knights have gotten away with that one, and that is going to be it for the quarter. Aris Pittman on the reception at the one-yard line, and he was knocked out of bounds as the quarter ex as the half expired. A great job by the Knights, but they did get caught with their pants in a little bit there because he was out in the open all by himself. And the gift, let's give credit who uh, came up with that big stop that time. He had all times the world, uh, all kinds of time in the world there, and wide open and on the far side, and a big stop that coming up with meters, and he came out of nowhere to make the stop. That was huge right there with Pittman that was trying to go into the end zone. So we go to halftime. It is Cabell Midland 14, Ironton 8. We're back after this timeout with the halftime report next right here on 97.9 The River. The Marshall Orthopedics High School Game of the Week is presented by the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute. Fueled by your neighborhood Parmar store. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. And sponsored by Huntington Highway Safety Distracted Driving, Chase and Elkin State Farm, Tax Masters Pro Books, and Kid Sale. Mr. Cooper, we have an emergency at a middle school. Thank you. Board office, will you activate the crisis team? This is not a drill. Cabell County Schools, we are ready, alert, and aware. standing partner in our community. We're your neighbors, your teammates, and your friends, and we want to be your banker. We're a team of experienced professionals focused on the personal, residential, and business needs of our community. We make decisions locally, quickly, and with your best interest in mind. We care about you, your family, your business, and your goals. We're PCB, a proud community bank. Open an account with us today. At Food Fair, fresh produce means we use local farmers and agriculture to provide the best for your family, from the farm into your hands. Convenience means providing cut and ready fruits and vegetables that give your family freshness without the prep time. By downloading the Food Fair app, you can shop fresh, collect cart cash rewards, and even have freshness delivered right to your door. Download the Food Fair app today and start shopping. Food Fair, conveniently fresh.
for five bucks these days, unless. Is that a real song? I think she liked it. Your choice of sandwich plus all this for just five bucks is worth celebrating. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's Piggy Bank. Hi, I'm Tarambus Patrick from Charleston, West Virginia, and when I'm back home, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We have that gold and blue pride at your local Parmar store. We are coming to your neighborhood soon. West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Maryland, we have you covered. Download the Parmar app and sign up for the Parmar Rewards card. Food, gas, groceries, and more, we are gold and blue proud, and we are Parmar stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Here at Thornhill, our goal is to provide you with the best automotive experience. From our state-of-the-art facilities, amenities, and certified staff, we call family. You'll be offered the best experience you deserve. We take pride in our focus for customer care, bringing the best quality and support for all of our customers' needs. What are you waiting for? It's your time to get behind the wheel with Thornhill. Get started now at thornhillautomotive.com. Just tag it at Thornhill, where it's all here for you. US 119 Chapmanville and Logan, WV to Belfry, Kentucky. I think she liked it. Your choice of sandwich plus all this for just five bucks is worth celebrating. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's Piggy Bank. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the
the score before Ali's 56-yard run, I don't want to jinx this or anything, but it was a 50, it was a 75-yard flea flicker to put the Marshall herd in the, the end zone. In the lead. Yeah, put Marshall in the lead. So wow. the anniversary game, it's a, it's it's very poignant that number certainly, but it, it was the one to give Marshall the lead. Now they're up 31. To 13. And they've been battling weather down there too. Yeah. A lot of a lot of teams, a lot of college teams today have had delays for lightning. Yep. I know uh, we just heard Mountaineer game up in Morgantown with Duquesne is in a lightning delay. Uh, I thought it was a great ceremony that they did down in uh, in Greenville, North Carolina today with uh, not only Keith Morehouse but also Red Dawson down there. Nice. And the uh, the seventy the 1970 East Carolina Pirate team is doing a reunion this right. weekend. So. They did. A, they honored them with uh, some footballs and some stuff down there too. I thought. Yeah, that was pretty sweet. cool. Really yeah. cool, and to see Red Dawson there because he's not been there since 1970. He really? Said, yeah. I did not know that. Okay. Uh, for leading, leading rushing and passing for the Knights on the evening, uh, Shockey goes six of ten for 50 yards. Curtis Jones Jr. 12 for 64 yards, and on the Ironton side of things, four of 11 passing for 64 yards for Thacker. Thacker also has five rushes for minus 14 yards. And then Williams goes uh, 5 for 13. Hart is 2 for 7 yards. And that's your rushing and passing for the Tigers and the Midland Knights. Well, you got Curtis Jones Jr. with a couple of touchdown runs, 1 of 16, 1 of 4. It was a punt return for a touchdown of 70 yards for Ironton and their points and, of course, a two-point conversion after that too. So uh, coming back out in the second half, it will be Ironton getting the football back. They did have some momentum there. They went did. in at the half. They came up about a yard shy of the touchdown of take, retaking the lead. What, is, uh, what do the Knights need to do in the second half? You know, I think they need to do more of the same defensively. I, I think the, the other thing, I mean, offensively, I, I don't feel like even though you you have Thacker with 50 yards, or not Thacker, but Shockey with 50 yards passing, I think you got to look at I think you got to look at your wideouts a little more in, in this in this game. Um, they keyed in on Curtis Jones a few times. Curtis is able to have a good a good first half, but I think you I think you get a little more diverse in your in your offensive schemes in the second half. And then the other thing, just for the sake of saying it, and I said it in the first half, you, you the only thing they really have had to worry about, quote unquote, is uh, Terry, the receiver. Sean Terry's been been the threat that I've noticed more than anybody else for the Fighting Tigers. Well, we'll see how it all shakes out. We get ready for the second half. The band's wrapping things up. We're seeing the Ironton Fighting Tigers make their way down the ramp. The Midland Knights will be making their way down the ramp. Coming up next right here. On, uh, we'll take a final break. We'll come back for the second half right here. 97.9 The River. The Marshall Orthopedics High School Game of the Week is presented by the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute. Fueled by your neighborhood Parmar store. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. And sponsored by Huntington Highway Safety Distracted Driving, Chase and Elkin State Farm, Tax Masters Pro Books, and Kid Sale. Mr. Cooper, we have an emergency at a middle school. Thank you. Board office, will you activate the crisis team? This is not a drill. In Cabell County Schools, we are ready, alert, and aware. standing partner in our community. We're your neighbors, your teammates, and your friends, and we want to be your banker. We're a team of experienced professionals focused on the personal, residential, and business needs of our community. We make decisions locally, quickly, and with your best interest in mind. We care about you, your family, your business, and your goals. We're PCB, a proud community bank. Open an account with us today. At Food Fair, fresh produce means we use local farmers and agriculture to provide the best for your family, from the farm into your hands. 
Convenience means providing cut and ready fruits and vegetables that give your family freshness without the prep time. By downloading the Food Fair app, you can shop fresh, collect cart cash rewards, and even have freshness delivered right to your door. Download the Food Fair app today and start shopping. Food Fair, conveniently fresh. You need it? Okay. Ready to get wrapped up here. We got ready to go back to action with the Knights and the Ironton Fighting Tigers. Real quick, we got a quick second. Let's check in with Kent Bryson down on the field. Kent? I have probably the greatest band director in the. Oh, make sure you point it towards us. There you are. Make, I, I was going to say, I have before me the greatest band director in the history of uh, West Virginia education. And uh, surprisingly, I found this out. He was leaving us this week to take a job with the State Department which is um, our loss, but a benefit for all the children in the state. So I wanted to give Mr. James an opportunity to uh, speak to the Midland population, to actually tell them how much they meant to him, and for them to give an opportunity to let him shine. So this is our forever, Mr. Tim James. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you, the community. You all have been really, 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 really good to me and to the band. And the kids work really hard, but you show your appreciation. And, you know, I couldn't find a better school to be at. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. And um, I hope the band is successful. I'm sure it will be when I leave. And anything I can do to help the community, all you have to do is call on me. All right, thank you. Hey, hey, Kent, can you ask him, does he get to take any of those many, many trophies home with him? <laughs> Mr. James, they want to know a question because we've had this discussion Make sure you point towards us there. We're losing you a little bit. I got you here. There you go. How does the Cabell Midland Band carry all of the trophies and awards that they accumulate during band season? We speculate that you guys have a special vehicle. We call it the trophy vehicle. That just shows. Show, and with these shelves, you kind of keep the hardware. So if you can just let us know that, we would greatly appreciate it. Where does Midland store all of their trophies? That's funny. They're all in the band room. You just go in the band room, you'll see them uh, sitting around the room on two lo two levels of shelves now. So they got room for a few more. Hey, you tell that guy he has his own day in Barbersville, Kim Bryson. Wow, I've just received that he, they're going to declare it. a No, Tim he knows it. He already has it. Yeah. He doesn't. He doesn't he, we're not doing it. He already has it. Well, you have your day, your Tim James day. And, 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 here's, what, here's, and here's really what I want to uh, push for, and they heard it here first. They should rename the music department – in honor of Tim James. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. I like it. Let's so do that, it. That's what we're going to do. That, All right. That's your campaign. You need to make that happen. <laughs> yes, uh, I will do it. All right. There Tim you James go. forever. Thank, tell him, thank, thank you, you very much. We appreciate yeah. it. Kent Bryson and, and Tim James, who, uh, who's who been the longtime leader of this band here for Cabell Midland, 11 times straight championships in the state of West Virginia. Uh, retirement announced this week. You you went to the ceremony, right? Uh, yeah, and, and you know what? We did, after they won their 11th state championship, we honored him at – council meeting and actually made Tim James Day at, at Barbersville City Council. So well deserved and, and they say band director of the year in the state of West Virginia. As far as I'm concerned, I think he had he now owns the longest streak in the country Gotta for be, yeah. state championships. And I guess we'll have a chance to see the uh, the Midland band with yeah. uh, Barbersville Fall Fest. Yeah that's up, right. right. Yep. They'll be in the Fall Fest parade on that Thursday. The the Fall Fest runs from the twenty seventh to thirtieth, but and the parade is on the twenty eighth on that Thursday, the last week in September. So, yep, you'll get a chance to see the Midland Band march through the streets of Barbersville. I will get to be there for the parade, and I won't get to be there for the rest of it. So, I, I, I always – that's – you always got to work. You got to work this around my schedule. Lord. I know, I know. Right. So I'm in town. I'm usually with you. I know. I'm usually with you too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. We're getting ready for second half action here. The band has made their way back up into the stands, and uh, the Knights are getting ready to kick it off. They're going to go from right to left this time. Hornbuckle with the approach, tees it up at the 40. This time he's going to send it deep, and deep takes a bounce at about the 14. Gets a midland roll and picked up on the run there by the Tigers, and the Knights will come in quickly. To wrap him up to uh, make the stop as he works his way up to about the 24-yard line. Did you see who the initial hit and wrap-up was? It was Cannon Lewis. Yeah, <laughs> He's man, all over the place, The man, man. that had to have help He's going up the ramp all over afterwards. The place. Yeah, yeah. Well, he got a hold of a big old Gatorade, and he's ready to roll. <laughs> For sure. 
He'll stay out on the field. And it'll be Ironton with the football going from left to right. They'll start this drive off at their own 24-and-a-half-yard line. And they will go from uh, two wideouts to the left, single wideout right. In the backfield, it is Copas. And a handoff coming back towards the near side with the back, and he spins around. Check that as Williams. And then Williams, the ninth move, gets across the 30, up to the 35. And he gets enough for the first down on the first play. The tackle. Cannon Lewis there to make that tackle. He was initially hit by Miles Meters, but uh, able to kind of get away with Zane Williams. But Cannon Lewis was right there to finish it off, but not before Williams was able to pick up that first down. Yeah, good move that time. And we've seen a lot in the backfield there between Williams and Copas. Also, Gavin Hart's been in the backfield tonight for the Ironton Fighting Tigers. It will be Williams this time, single set back in the pistol formation. Two wide outs left, single wide out right, man in motion coming towards the near side. That is Terry. High snap, pulled down, hand off into the backfield to Williams, and he gets maybe just beyond the line of scrimmage. Trace Adkins in on the stop, leading the way for the Knights. Also in there on the stop was Gew for Cavill Midland. Elijah Pratt also on, on coverage for the Knights there. No gain. No gain at all. Second down, 10 coming up just underway here in the third quarter. The Knights on top by a score of 14 to 8 as you listen to Cabell Midland football on WMGA Canova Huntington. Two wideouts near side. Now man in motion. Back moved a little early. No call by the official. Pass going back to the far side. Looking for the official making oh, the wow. grab. Actually, the receiver's going to make the grab all the way at the 30. Goes to 20. 15, 10, 5 into the touchdown. And that is Tyler Roach in there on the, the reception. 64 yards on the touchdown reception for Tyler Roach from Thacker. And that was the defender falling down over on the far side for Cabell Midland. I think that the, on the defense time uh, over there that time, that was Pratt on the coverage. Got tripped up a little bit and fell down. Boy, Thacker found Roach, and Roach was able to go 60, 64 yards on the score. And they're going to put, they're going to uh, kick the extra point this time. Roach, the junior, that is touchdown reception number two on the season. Only his third reception of the season. Extra point attempt coming up. It's good snap, good hold. The kick is up, and it is good. Tie ball game at 14, and a big start here to the second half by the Ironton Fighting Tigers. We're tied up, we're tied up at 15 14. We're back after this break right here on 97 9 The River. The Marshall Orthopedics High School Game of the Week is presented by the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute. Fueled by your neighborhood Parmar store. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. And sponsored by Huntington Highway Safety Distracted Driving. Chase and Elkin State Farm. Tax Masters Pro Books. And Kid Sale. Cabell County Schools has a zero tolerance policy for bullying, harassment, and intimidation. We're excited to provide the Stop It Mobile app for our students. Stop It has two powerful features. Students may report incidents or talk directly to school officials. Cabell County students have the power to end harmful and inappropriate online or physical bullying. You can download the app from Apple or Google Play. Together, we can create a safer, kinder school community. Big 64-yard touchdown pass coming for the Ironton Fighting Tigers as Braden, uh, excuse me, as uh, Bailey uh, Thacker connected on with Tyler Roach. Tyler Roach picking up his, third, his second touchdown of the season in a big way. He just basically, the defender fell down, and he went on in. It was a great pass, though, oh, by Thacker. A, yeah, it was perfect. The pass was perfect. Here's the approach on the kickoff, and it's end over end coming towards the near side, and the receiver makes the grab as he dives his way out of bounds towards the near side, and that's Curtis Jones, Jr. He uh, probably could have let it just roll out, yeah. but he made the catch, and it'll be first and 10 for Cabell Midland at their own 16-yard line. So we'll see what the Knights' the offense can do here to try to answer. Ironton, who got the two-point conversion early, that gives them a one-point advantage, 15-14, with 10.40 left to play third quarter. Jones just kind of laid out for that ball, actually, and fell out of bounds as he put it in the bread basket. They'll put him on the 16-yard line. Starting to see the wind kind of swirl a little bit down there on the field, too. Two wide outs either way. Ball near hash mark. Shockey out of the pistol. Handoff is to Jones. Hit behind the line of scrimmage. Continues to power his way forward and gets his way across the 20 up to about the 21-yard line. 
Four yards on the pickup for Jones. It'll uh, put him out to the 20 yard line. Jones just keeps those legs turning and he works so hard on, the, on those extra couple yards because he got hit at the line of scrimmage. Two wide outs either way. Ball near hash mark. And as Shockey keeps it himself, rolls out right side, gets across the 25 and gets close to a first down to about the 25 and a half yard line. I think he's going to be about a half a yard shy. Third and short coming up for the Knights. Yeah, just shy of that first down, Mark. I mean, here, here's the thing. You got Jones has been picking up four and five yards per carry. This is obviously where I'm going if it's my call. But then you got Lunsford who's going to come in and probably serve as a, block, a blocker for Jones. Watch Officials, for him to go around that right side. Official stopping the clock. Reset the play clock. Probably. Yep, they they've, had, they've had trouble with it all evening this evening. Now back in motion. Ball far hash mark. Out of the pistol once again is Shockey. He'll send Lunsford off towards the near side. And he'll line up as a blocking back. It goes behind Turner, uh, actually behind uh, Lunsford. It is Curtis Jones giving enough for the first down and then some. Needed a half yard, picked up about three and a half. Yeah, you saw him just follow Lunsford. Lunsford kind of switched sides as they came to the line of scrimmage. He had lined up initially on the right sideline, came over here to the near near side, and, and Jones just kind of followed him uh, to the to the line of scrimmage, and they got the, got the yardage they needed a little bit more. First and 10 for Cabell Midland, 9.09 mark here in the third quarter. Knights trail by one, 15-14. Pistol formation once again. Jones lines up behind Shockey. Handoff is to Jones. Gets up across the line of scrimmage with the 31. Works his way up to about the 34. The old three yards and a cloud of dust. Yeah, they've run that, they've run that kind of delayed you know, draw a, a number of times, and every time it's getting Curtis Jones four and five yards. I mean, there's no reason to get away from your bread and butter, especially when you're moving the ball like that. Although, I'll go back to what I said in the halftime report when we were talking. I think you've got to make your offense – it's working. Don't get me wrong. But when you're at, when you're at 15 to 14, you've got to diversify that offense a little bit. All right, here we go. Set a man in motion near side. Shockey runs the option, pitches it off to the right. The receiver makes the grab at his branch, and he spins around. He stayed up on his feet, got an extra yard after he took the initial hit. He rolled across the back of uh, number six for the Fighting Tigers, who's not on our – our depth chart, but he rolled across the back of that defender, landed on his feet, had never touched the turf, and he did, as Jason said, got a couple extra yards out of that. Branch did a great job yeah. of keeping his feet on that. and Got the extra yards. Now third down and short, about a yard and a half, two yards. Nice move. Was good yeah, job by the yeah, official absolutely. to see it, not mark him down because yep. it was close. Two wide outs, right side, short side of the field. Offset eye once again. Shockey handoff up the middle to Jones. Jones' second effort is going to give him enough for the first down. Gets beyond the 40, up Look to about pile. the 42-yard line. He got hit behind the line of he scrimmage did. and went parallel and then found the hole and then lowered his shoulders, drove across the 40, and up to about the 42-yard line. That was the third yep. effort right there that got Jones. Yeah, as I said, <laughs> he, he just keeps his legs turning. He works so hard. And you're right, he got hit behind the line of scrimmage. He just kept churning and churning and, and picked up that first down. Great job on that as the Knights keeping the drive alive. All right, here we go. Ball far hash mark. Split backfield. Two backs, handoff near side branch. Nice, nice move towards the near got side. Room. Gets across the 50, 45, 40. He's got two men to beat, crossing the 30, and finally knocked out of bounds on the near sideline after a huge gain. They're going to say he stepped out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Sean Terry and Ben Sloan on coverage for the Fighting Tigers, but not before. Branch picks up a huge chunk of yardage into Ironton territory, farther into Ironton territory. They'll put him at the 25-yard line. A great pickup for the Knights. Give the credit to the offensive line on that one and the pulling guards and Parlier who uh, rolled out towards the near side had a great seal block to open up that outside lane. 35 yards on that pickup. Out of the gun split backfield handoff Jones he goes right side and gets across the 25 and he was down. Yes. They, they whistled him down. Well, the ball came loose yeah. as Curtis Jones kind of hit forward on the turf Ball squared out from underneath his uh, abdomen, but he had already he had already been ruled down. And it give him about a one yard pickup. Yeah, so not much. Football down to the twenty four yard line. Second down and nine coming up. Braden Shrek is now wearing number six. He switched jerseys. That's where that's where the loss. That's where we lost the the player for Ironton. 
This is the keeper, Shockey. Nice move. Gets across the 20 to the 15 and gets enough for the first down. Moves it down to the 13-yard line. That's his option. We got a penalty flag down, so we'll follow up with that. This one might come back, but shock. Nope. Now the Knights are saying it's against Ironton. Braylon Sturgill on the tackle for the Fighting Tigers. Able really probably saved the touchdown, to be honest with you. Well, they're going to mark it off against Ironton. Let's see what it is. We got a face mask, five yard penalty face mask against Ironton. So add five more yards to it, put it all the way down to the 10 yard line. That's Ironton's third penalty of the football game. Nice long drive here for Cabell Midland with a chance to regain the lead. 6.27 on a rolling clock, third quarter. It's Cabell Midland trailing by one, 15-14. Ball middle of the field, offset eye with Shockey. Goes back out of the shotgun. Actually has the pistol now with Jones lined up behind him. Pass back over to the right side. Here's the grab. It's a great catch on the right side. Breaks one tackle, gets across. And goes across the five and inside of the four-yard line on the reception that time for Cabell Midland. And a great catch over there on the Miles far side. Miles yeah, Meters. Meters actually put a hand down to avoid going. going to the turf and actually got himself inside the five-yard line. A nice heads-up play by Miles Meters on that reception. Meters getting a lot of play time he here. Yeah, he's had a good game. And, again, I'll just say this. We talked about diversifying the offense. That's exactly what you do right there. Offset eye, Shockey up underneath center. Tight end near side, hand off Jones, second man through, spins around, and we'll get a couple of extra yards down to about the two. Third and goal coming up from the two. Shrek and Copas in on the stop for the uh, Fighting Tigers, and you saw Curtis Jones trying to back his way into the end zone, just kept those legs moving, but he puts the ball on the two-yard line for the Knights. They keep moving towards pay dirt. Big Logan Gillespie in for another tight end there, the big six-foot-five junior. He'll line up towards the near side. Lunsford will be the tight end on the right side. Offset eye once again. Shockey up underneath center. Takes a snap. Oh, Pump, ball's on the, the carpet. Ball on the turf. It's going to be picked up by Ironton. That's Sean Terry who picked up that fumble. Trouble on the exchange, and Terry was able to get, the, get to the football. Shockey Shock made, a, made a play at it, but nowhere to go. Sean Terry picks up the football. And Shockey looked like he was trying to pull the ball back. Yep. And when he did, he got bumped out. Yeah, he was trying to pull back in from the handoff to Jones and lost it. And a turnover, a costly turnover. Ironton will take it back over. And that one hurts for sure. And one of those ones that Shockey, he's got to quickly forget about it because he's got to go on the defensive side of things. Yep. That's tough. You're down in, You're down inside the 10 with a fumble like that. These. This is what haunted them last week was turnovers against Spring Valley. This becomes an issue in the second half for the Knights. It's gonna, that's going to spell bad news for sure. All right, here we go. We'll see what the, Knight, the Knights defensively can do as Ironton takes back over. Thacker trying to orchestrate his team. The officials are stopping play. They're looking at something. Come over towards the near side with Trevin Pendleton, coach. The officials, the officials point towards the Midland sideline. I'm not sure what's going on. Well, let's check in with see if Kent. Kent, you got any idea what's going on? Yeah, you can't play football without a ball. Oh, ah, okay. okay. <laughs> Simple <you> enough. <laughs> so that, that's what the situation is. Arnton did not have a football. Gotcha. Thank you, sir. That's why we got him down there. That's it, there man. There you go. You got to like it. 4.54 left to play. Third quarter. Out of the shotgun. It is Thacker. Has a back offset to his right. Quick pass back to his left. One-on-one -on -one coverage out there on the far side. The grab is made there by Roach. He'll turn up field, and he gets up across the 10 to about the 12-yard line. Branch on the initial hit for Midland, and then Shockey finishes it off for the Knights. Hurry up offense now for Ironton, trying to put pressure on this Midland defense. Second down, five coming up. Here goes a big and hit Lewis. the backfield. Wow. Man. Thacker tried to roll out towards the near side, <laughs> and all of a sudden, here comes Cannon Lewis. Man. He had an offensive lineman on his right shoulder and the quarterback on his left. What a Mack truck Cannon Lewis has been tonight. Holy cow. Too bad he's going to the ACC right. next year. Can <laughs> right. he stay here? Man, me too. <laughs> all right, split two splits to the left. Single wide out toward the right. Short side of the field out of the pistol formation. Knight showing pressure. Here goes Stacker. He's in the end zone. He's going to run out towards the near side. He saves a safety, and he steps out of bounds on the near sideline at the 15-yard line. He is going to be two yards shy of the first down. Fourth down and two for Ironton. 
Goodness, Thacker really made something out of that play. Like you said, he avoided the safety, but to get after the 15-yard line, he scrambled away and made something out of nothing. And it's going to force Ironton to punt the football away. The Knights move the ball down the field, but the problem is move the football down the field. There's confusion on the line of scrimmage and confusion yeah. on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Branch deep to receive for the Knights. All right, here's the punt. A little delay, taking their time. Here's the kick. End over end, takes an Ironton roll, gets across the 50, 45. Branch just lets it go across the 40. So pretty decent field position for the Knights. We've got a penalty flag back at the seven-yard line. So we'll check it. I'm not I, I think this might be against Ironton. Maybe. Chop block. Chop block against, against the Ironton. Against That's Ironton. All, yeah, I saw it. I saw it happen. I thought that might be the I thought that might be the end result of that of that call. You watch if you if you're watching, you'll see that him him get upended. I think yeah. who was getting upended was Carson Gu back where the flag is laying. So it'll give the Knights. Wow, well, that's a nice pickup yeah, that's of the a good Knights. Pickup. Goes Ended. from the 40 now to the 45 inside Ironton territory, yeah. and the Knights with another opportunity here. The defense stepped up. It came up with a, a, a stop defensively after the turnover down inside the five-yard line. So we'll see how the Knights can try to respond here. They trail by 1, 15, 14, 345 left to play here in this third quarter. Well, it's like you said, it's got to be short memory from that fumble a moment ago. They did a nice job on their defensive series. Now it's time to march the football down the field. Out of the pistol formation once again. Shockey takes a snap. Hand off to Jones. Jones goes up right side. Turns up field. Gets across the 45 up to about the 44-yard line. Give him a one-yard pickup on the play. Keeping it between the hash marks. Copas finishing off the tackle there for the Tigers. A gain of one. Second down and nine. Out of the pistol once again, two wide outs right, single wide out left. Here's a snap to Shockey, rolls out towards the near side on the boot, keeps it himself, turns up field, has open real estate to the right side, gets across the 40, 35 oh. on the far side of the 30, 25 oh. to the 20. Oh. Oh. He's wrapped up and brought down inside the 20-yard line. Man. Nice reverse pivot on that bootleg. It had open real estate to his right, and Chris? He faked Aiden Lane out of his football pants right there. He turned back across the field, a nice pickup and a nice run for shock over that far sideline. Now you've got somebody who's hurt on the far sideline. I think it's a cramping issue uh, right, over by the, right over by where the first down marker is. But a big pickup on that play for Shockey on the keeper and, and a just a nice-looking uh, – nice look. Uh, across the field, spinning off of coverage, evading tacklers, and a huge pickup for the Knights. Kent, is that uh, Shockey that's laying down over it, there? It is. He's cramping, and so they have a kind of a unique situation here. I don't think they're going to be able to get him ready to go for the next play. So the number two quarterback is actually number eight. He's a freshman, Mason. Mason Sammons. It's, it's Coach Sammons' yeah. uh, son. Yeah. So. so they can either bring him in, but it doesn't look like he's taking snaps. Oh, they're going to bring Shockey in. I don't know if they can without taking a timeout because they call. Yeah, that's what they're talking about right now. They're sending him off the field. So Midland can elect to take a timeout and put him back in, but it looks as if they're going with Sampson. Sammons. Yes. Sammons is going to do it. They, he's going to call the shots. All right, let's we'll see how it shakes out here. Salmon's going to go out of the pistol formation. Coming off uh, cold off the bench here. First down and 10. Takes a snap. Hands it off to Jones. Up oh, the middle. Wow. Finds a line open hole. 15 to the 10. Almost broke it free into the end zone. Shoestring tackle by Braylon Sturgill to save that touchdown for Curtis Jones. Boy, Jones had a head of steam uh, behind him, and, and he's he's a, yard, a half yard shy of the first down. But, boy, he almost he was close to Pater right there. Seven and a half yard line, about a yard shy of the first down. Second down and one coming up. Double tight end set. Wing back far side. Hand off Jones again. Jones with the power is going to get pushed back. See progress. Got him past yeah. the line of scrimmage and close to the first down marker, but he's going to be short. Only a half a yard pickup on the play. Third down and very short as Shockey continues to try to stretch those calves out as he cramps up once again. Austin Bump and Aiden Lade on the stop for the Tigers. And, and I'll say this, too. It's kind of poignant in that uh, Mason Sammons played his first down on Marshall turf where his dad played ball. That's awesome. 
That's pretty awesome cool. Indeed. Pretty cool. <laughs> All right, here we go. Third and short now for the Knights, trying to keep this drive alive. He'll be shocky out of the pistol. Jones, line up behind him, hand off Jones, left side. Jones trying to power his way for the first down. I believe he got the first down. He only needed a half a yard. Yeah. He got about a yard, and that's good enough to keep the drive going. First and goal coming up for the Knights. The thing about it, Chris, one of the things with the Knights, these drives are taking a lot of time they off are. the clock. This one, though, this is almost one of those have to scoring oh, points you, for yeah. them. You know, you they have, to. they've got to, they've got to put points on the board on this drive. They turned the ball over on their last long sustained drive, and now they're back where they were when they turned the ball over on the fumble last time. This is the time you've got to, you've got to get your your back up, and uh, hit 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 the goal line. Double tight end set. Extra back off to the right. Shockey, quick pitch to Jones. Right side, turns up, hit at the five. Falls forward, gets across the five to about the three-yard line. Second and goal coming up. Ball will be down to the three. Three-yard pickup on the play. Spun off of the tackle. Josh Johnson actually finished it off for the Tigers. But Jones, again, just working so hard. He comes up kind of limping a little bit too, but he's been working hard out there for the Knights all night. Coach Luke Salmon steps out about four yards onto the field, gives the play call to Shockey. I don't know if you guys talked about it first couple of games. He slimmed down oh, Luke yeah. Sammons. Lost oh, yeah, about we, we did. I, I actually complimented yeah. on him I complimented <laughs> him on it when we saw him the first game. Gray shirt is soaked with sweat here tonight. Double tight end set once again. Here is Shockey. Keeps it on the delay. Steps into the end zone. Fighting. He's pushed. Did he get it? Nope. They're going to say short. Now, now he's he does. In. That final wow. push with that offensive line pushing him into the end zone. And Cabell Midland goes back on top. It was Shockey that kept it behind Curtis Jones Jr. And when he went in or got close to it, it was another push from the backside to get it in. We got an injured player. Actually, it is uh, Shockey once again who is uh, down, cramping up he's on got, the field. Gotta be, it's got to be a cramp. But what an effort by Robert Shockey to get into the end zone. And you know he fought for all, he had He needed three yards in, in that run. I'm going to say he earned all three of those. I'll say Powered he, his way in. He ran four to get three. Yes. So, it, <laughs> But here's the, here's the question now. Shockey's the holder. He's got to go out of play. Do you? What do you do? I, I exactly what I well, exactly what they should do is is put your backup holder in and, and put it put it through the uprights because you want because Shockey can't come in for this play. Nope. His helmet's off. He's going to have to be out of play, and it's the extra point attempt. So we'll see what they do. But I think you put your backup holder in and, and you put it through the uprights, which is exactly what they're doing. And holding is going to be it looks like Caden Bowen. Yep, it is Bowen. Hornbuck will come on to kick it. Never cut the long snapper. How about that? Another former yeah, Hurt player. Yeah, absolutely. Split the upright, and it is good. The Knights go back out on top. It is 21-15. We're back after the 60-second break right here on 97.9 The River. Yeah, I like. When you send or receive a text message, you take your eyes off the road for five seconds. At 55 miles an hour, that's like driving more than the length of a football field, blindfolded. As a result, Thousands of people die every year in crashes related to distracted driving. That's why we're cracking down on people who text or use their smartphones while driving. We would rather you cross the goal line alive. Law enforcement officers write tickets to save lives. Don't text and drive. At Food Fair, fresh produce means we use local farmers and agriculture to provide the best for your family from the farm into your hands. Convenience means providing cut and ready fruits and vegetables that give your family freshness without the prep time. By downloading the Food Fair app, you can shop fresh, collect cart cash rewards, and even have freshness delivered right to your door. Download the Food Fair app today and start shopping. Food Fair, conveniently fresh. 21-15 is our score. 34 seconds left to play here in the third quarter. The Knights regain the lead after a three-yard touchdown run by the quarterback, Shockey, and he went out, didn't do the hold, but no problem. The Knights were able to get it done. Hornbuckle split the uprights to get the extra point. Here he is now with the kickoff, going from right to left. Sky kick towards the near side, going to be fielded here at the 34-yard line, and he is leveled on the near side as he made the grab. The receiver that time. Braden Shrek. Raiden Shrek, who changed jerseys, wearing number six now. 
Went from 12 to 6, so just take half a number off there. But now he got leveled here on the near sideline by the Knights. Also, I forgot to mention one of our uh, very faithful listeners, Allison Gu's birthday, her 15th birthday. She's a freshman at Cabell Midland, so happy birthday to you, oh. Allison. Happy birthday, Allison. Is she here? She should be here. I right? think she's here tonight, but right. they, she, she's, she and her, and her family are avid listeners of the broadcast. Gotcha, so gotcha. want to make sure <laughs> we said happy birthday to Allison. Gotcha. Yeah, <laughs> Braden Shrek got absolutely leveled here on the near sideline on that return. Shrek split out to the far side. I formation lined up behind Thacker. Here's a snap, handoff, first man through, near side. That is the fullback, and that is Copas. The junior, and he spins around, gets across the 40. Good at second effort right there to get to about the 42-and-a-half yard line. Pick up a six, brings up second down and four. Copas, one of those guys who plays both ways. We talked about him a lot defensively in this first half, and he gets the call there for the uh, short pickup. I formation once again. This could be the final play of the quarter. Hand off second man through. That's Williams. Williams hits the line and got about a yard, make it two yards on the play, and that's going to be it for the third quarter. We go to the fourth quarter here in the battle at the border. It is Cabell Midland 21, Ironton 15. We got ourselves a battle going to the fourth quarter, and that's coming up next after this 60-second timeout right here on 97.9 The River. Man, what a game. Man, what a game. Oh, yeah. Holy awesome. cow. What a game. They, they have got to quit with the mistakes. I, I know. The fundamental stuff. Edwards Stadium, and we're back to action again as Cannon Lewis, Cannon Lewis as we switch sides, <laughs> comes up with another big stop once again on four, and that brings up fourth down. He just pummeled Copas. Cannon Lewis has had such a huge game and has been such an impact maker for this Cabell Midland defense. And it is incredible. Thacker on the carry that time, trying to, to work from the quarterback spot to pick up just a yard and a half is all they need. He went nowhere with it. So fourth down and make it two. And we are in the fourth quarter, 11.25. Yeah, 11.25 left to play. That crowd noise coming from the far side for Cabell Midland with five down linemen defensively for the Knights. Stacker keeps it himself once again, trying to drive, and he is not going to make it this time. He had to get down to about the – get up to about the 47-yard line. He made it to the 46, and that's about it. Zach Ramey and Trace Adkins all over Thacker, and that will turn the ball over on downs unless they're going to give him a good spot. Boy, it looked like he got hit early. I can I cannot imagine that spot is going to be well, even close. They they got it spotted down at the 46 40, yard yeah, line. Right. The, he needed to get to the, the 47. The 47. Yeah. Yeah, the sticks the 47. And the Knights fans are booing they are because going crazy. Because even Coach Luke Sammons is going crazy. Well, on, look, it's not. A, if you look at where yeah. they have the ball in the turf, it's not even close. <laughs> We can tell you this is slated as an Ironton home game, so it's an Ironton chain crew that will bring the sticks over <laughs> from the far side. And they will stretch it out. Yeah, that's I was going to say, there's no way. no way. I was going to say, there is absolutely no way. That is a full yard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, precisely. All right, so the Knights will get the ball back. they got excellent field position inside <laughs> Ironton territory. It will be at the 45-and-a-half yard line on the far hash mark. That was anticlimactic. I know. I <laughs> because like, wow. you could see it. I'm like, why are they measuring it? 11-11 <laughs> left to play in regulation. It's Cabell Midland 21, Ironton 15. Two wide out split towards the near side for the Knights. Two to the far side, the short side of the field. It will be Jones lining up as the back in the pistol right behind Shockey, the quarterback. 
Takes a snap. Handoff is to Jones, and he's hit right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, on the stop that time was Aiden Lane. Lane has covered him up a few times, and Lane has done a nice job kind of shutting that hole, closing the door on Jones a few times this evening. Yeah, another big stop there. Noah Patterson, who's also been in on the stop. He's the big nose guard. He's the senior. He is the Eastern Michigan commitment uh, after this year for this team. About a half a yard pickup brings it second down a long nine. Out of the pistol again, two wide outs either way. Here goes oh, Shockey. Man. Hit in the oh, backfield of the football comes out. Nope, Shockey kept it. Somebody's helmet Somebody's came, helmet came off. off. That was one of the Ironton. That's what thing it threw me. I thought that was the ball that popped out. It was an yeah. Ironton helmet that popped off. Gavin Hart's helmet that came off. And He's he was the one that laid the hit. Yeah, he did. On Curtis Jones yeah. Jr. So Shockey pulled it back out. Well, he laid it right in there to, to Jones and Shockey. Good thing he held on to that ball. Bounce ball is he lost yardage. Third down and a long 14. Man in motion towards the near side. Two wide outs near side. Shockey out of the gun. Ironton shows blitz, falls back. Shockey steps up into the pocket. No pressure, finds a receiver, making the grab across the middle. He turns up field, gets across the 35 to the 30, cuts up to the 25-yard line, and another big grab and a great night for Miles Meters. Meters, he has had done a great job tonight. Chris, he has been offensively the big key guy when it comes to those passes. You're absolutely right, and over about the 35-yard line, he cut away from Braden Shrek so hard. Shrek just about broke his ankles trying to turn back to catch up with Meters. A great pitch and catch and a great run out by Meters for the Knights to pick up the first down and a big chunk of yardage. That's a breaker right there for the Ironton defense that was getting ready to come up with a big stop. All right, here goes Shockey out of the shotgun. Fakes the handoff, keeps it, rolls out to his left, cuts back up across the middle, gets across the 20, and works his way down to about the 16-yard line. And, you know, you can talk about meters all you want, but you talk about Shockey. How tough is this kid play tonight? <laughs> Cramping issues and everything else. Comes off the sidelines, hurt, is trying to pump the crowd up and still doing the work out there right now. And normally, he, the only time he came off was when he was right. hurt. When he was, yeah, when he had the cramp. I don't think yeah. he's on the kickoff team, so that's one thing. <laughs> right, that's true. All right, they'll split a wide out towards the near side. Two wide outs towards the near side. Ball far hash mark. Pauly, one of those wide outs near side along with Nida. Here goes Jones, handoff up the middle, gets across the 15, stretches out as he works he his way across it. the 15, 14, 13. First down. And that big stretch was good. Yeah, he did a nice job picking up that first down. Of course, we've talked about him all evening too and his tendency to just keep the legs moving he's backed into a couple first downs tonight but jones just works so hard do we have a final on the team that normally plays on this field today uh let me yeah. let me check that knights or the uh thundering herd was pulling away with that they one against were, east carolina final score i'm looking and that will be the first win for the thundering herd in greenville two wide outs far side single near side ball far hash mark shockey out of the pistol Jones lined up behind him. Handoff is to Jones up the middle, lowers his shoulder, keeps it working, gets across the 10 and down to about the seven yard line. 31-13 is your final score. That's a good win good down win. there for the Thundering Herd. And I'll tell you, after last week, I was a little bit critical of the herd, but I'll, I'll, I'll say that Eaton Crow tastes pretty good today. Yeah, it is. And I'm just the first ever win down there, which is really cool. So. Be flying. Hopefully they have an easier time flying back than what they had going down yesterday. They had to circle quite a bit and then eventually go to Richmond to refuel before they could land in Greenville. Oh, yeah, I heard that. Yeah. Ball tough, far hash tough mark. time getting there. Yeah, ball far hash mark. Here's a pass from Shockey. Looks back to his right. Does the receiver have it? Yes, he does. Touchdown, Cabell Midland. Caden Pauley stretches it out on the near side hash mark inside the goal line, and he comes away with the touchdown reception of eight yards from Shockey. Eight-yard touchdown reception for Caden. Probably a little pitch and catch there. He came right across from the right side, ran the post route, and uh, hits pay dirt from an eight-yard touchdown uh, throw from Shockey. Extra points on the way. And here we go. Here goes Hornbuckle. Good snap, good hole, kick is up, and it is good. Cabell Midland opening things up. They are on top by a score of 28-15. We're back after the 60-second timeout right here on 97.9 The River.
Hi, I'm Doug Nestor. I'm from Canova, West Virginia. And when I'm back home, you can find me at my local Parmar store. We had that gold and blue pride at your local Parmar store. We are coming to your neighborhood soon. West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Maryland, we have you covered. Download the Parmar app and sign up for the Parmar Rewards Card. Food, gas, groceries, and more, we are gold and blue proud, and we are Parmar Stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. The Marshall Orthopedics High School Game of the Week is presented by the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute. Fueled by your neighborhood Parmar store. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. And sponsored by Huntington Highway Safety Distracted Driving. Chase and Elkins State Farm. Tax Masters Pro Books. And Kid Sale. The border is definitely showing a pretty good battle here tonight between Ironton and Cabell Midland. The Knights have now added another touchdown, and this time an eight-yard touchdown pass from Shockey to Pauly. Extra point from Hornbuckle, making the score 28-15. to We've got 7.23 left to play in regulation. Here goes Hornbuckle with the kick. Sky kick towards the near side, going to be fielded at the 20-yard line, coming your way towards the 25-30, and knocked out of bounds on the near side. That is Pittman once again on the return. Give him about 11 yards on the return, first and 10 for Ironton. Zach Ramey kind of that uh, spins the ankle tackle there, I guess, for lack of a better term. He uh, caught him by the ankle, was able to upend him there. Could have gotten a little more a little more yardage out of that. Also, I have failed to mention, it is my great nephew's birthday, Liam Brock McComas. Happy birthday, son. I'm, I am so sorry that your uncle failed you in not <laughs> telling you happy birthday tonight. You didn't know I was that old to have did, a great nephew. Did, did not you? know that. Well, you were the baby of the favorite. Uh, well, right? yeah. Yeah, my, well my, my, my sister that's close to me in age, she's about 20, 20 years older than I am. Oh, geez. Wow. Okay, less <laughs> separation. I'm All kidding. right, here we go. Uh, see what the night the uh, Tigers can do with the football. Thacker, the quarterback, out of the pistol formation with Williams. Fakes the handoff to him. Pass back over to the right side. The reception made on the far side by Terry, trying to juke his way through, and he's going to be wrapped up and brought down. Nida leading the way on the stop for Cabell Midland over there. Trace Adkins in on the stop, too. And let's see, a pickup of just a couple, couple of, yards of yards on the play. Yeah, Trace Atkins had a big game, too. Defensively, like I said, the, the Cabell Middle has done a nice job. You take the gaff off the off the coverage away from them, the little gaff with the punt return, and, and Midland's defense has performed really well here tonight. Tatum Moore on the field now for Ironton out of the pistol formation for Thacker. Handoff is to him up the middle. And he works his way, no gain really. Might have got a half a yard. Look and who was right there, Cannon Lewis. <laughs> surprise, surprise, stop. right? <laughs> yeah. Man, what a force he has been tonight. Third and long coming up for Ironton. Clock rolls down, 6.20 left to play in regulation. Capital Midland 28, Ironton 15. Pittman splits over to the far side. Two wide outs near side. There goes Stacker out of the shotgun. Takes a snap all kinds of time. Rolls out towards the near side. He's going to be wrapped Ball's up. Loose. loose is the football. It's going to be picked up. Cannon Lewis Cannon is there Lewis to pick it up. right there. How Forcing about that? that? fumble, though, for Cabell Midland was Braylon Ryder. Big Braylon Ryder, 6'1", 205, senior for the Cabell Midland Knights. Forced that fumble, and Cannon Lewis was right there to pick it up. Flags are down across side the line. field. Sideline deal. Looks like they're going to get them on the far side for celebrating. Well, you know what? In this atmosphere, how can, how can you not? Yeah. Yeah, you're there right. Sideline warning. But how how can you not be pumped in this <laughs> atmosphere and a play like that? Because that is if they put together, they, they have great field position. But, again, you run the football, keep that clock rolling. This ball game is all but over. Yep, and especially if the Knights can put themselves another score up yep. on the board here. And, actually, the exits now – a lot of folks on the near sideline <laughs> here for Ironton making their way yeah. back. What, what did you say, the, the depot and Oh, the else? depot, Molina Kachina yeah. and Toro Loco about and, to get, and the Armory are all about to get – you guys get your weight <laughs> staff ready because they're coming. 18 miles away from here, they're coming <laughs> to you. All right, here goes Shockey. Handoff is the Jones left side. Now breaks it out to the outside, has an open lane, turns up, gets across the 20, breaks a tackle there at the 15, <laughs> works his way down to about the 11-yard line. That was a man running on a mission. He goes about 20. Shrek lowered the shoulder, and when Curtis Jones lowered his shoulder to Shrek, Shrek went flat back. What a run by Curtis Jones. 
Holy cow, Jones was a man on a mission. He's animated on that one. Tell you what, first and ten now for the Knights. They can pick up a first down if they can get down inside that three-yard line. Kent said you can't forget about the Frisch's big boy, too. That, oh, that's, that right, that's, right, that's right, that's Heck, right. I forget about it. I might go down there myself. <laughs> Two wide outs far side, offset eye. Matter of fact, out of the uh, pistol now with Jones back, lined up behind Shockey. Handoff now to Jones. He'll break it out to the outside of the five. Lowers the shoulder, dives his way down close to the first down marker. And he will probably have the first down. It'll be first and goal for the Knights. Yeah, the ball was on the 12. I think he's going to be at about the two, maybe the one-yard line, and that's going to give the Knights a first and goal situation. Good sure. job by Nida on the outside to seal the outside yeah. with a great block out there against Sturgill. It gave him that lane. First and goal for the Knights, ball at the two-yard line. Well, you don't. I don't deviate from Curtis Jones yeah, at this let point. Him, let him finish this let one Let him ride, off. man, exactly. Under five minutes left to play. Here we go. Ball far hash mark. Shockey will go out of the pistol. Jones lined up behind him. Two wideouts left, single wideout right. Short side of the field is the far side, and the timeout's going to be taken by Cabell Midland. Break in the action. We'll take one ourselves. 435 left to play. It's Knights 25, the Tigers 15. Back after this 60 second break right here on 97 Nine River. We're here at Mount West is to facilitate student success in a variety of ways. Students know that somebody cares. They know that there's somebody on the other table that is willing to do everything they can to make them successful. Somebody can walk in the door not knowing what they want to do, and they can talk through what their options might be. There's a, a program or a pathway for you here at Mount West. We have a pathway for, for anybody. Planning for a funeral is never easy, and selecting the right mortuary can be important. Family owned and operated for over six decades, our family has helped other families going through the most difficult time. Chapman's Mortuary and Crematory can help you plan arrangements today or offer a pre-need funeral plan in line with your intimate wishes. And now, we provide Huntington's only on-site crematory. Call us for a free consultation. Chapman's Mortuary and Crematory, serving the Tri-State for over 60 years. Well, the officials came back a little quick. The play went off. He didn't miss much. Curtis Jones Jr. went up the middle and got stopped at the line of scrimmage. Might have moved the yard marker a little bit, about a half a yard. So it is a first, a second and goal from the one now for the Knights. Cannon Lewis will check into the lineup now. Looks like we'll be going to that double tight end set once again. Actually, three tight ends. We bring Cannon in. That's exactly what's happening. <laughs> Two tight ends, left side. Shockey takes a snap, handoff to Jones. He'll go left side behind those double tight ends and walks into the end zone for a touchdown. Third touchdown of the night for Curtis Jones Jr. Hits pay dirt at the 349 mark of the fourth quarter, and that will all but seal the deal for the Knights here this evening. One-yard TD run this time for Curtis Jones Jr. And the Knights really opening this one up. It's been a couple of – it's been defense-forced turnovers – and the Knights capitalize in off of it. We got word from Kent Bryson down on the sideline just a minute ago, and you and I were talking about it on the break as well. Fatigue starting to set in for these Ironton Fighting Tigers. Bowen is the holder. Kick is up, and it is no good. Oh, Actually, no. he missed it. All right. Really went left. 34-15 our score. We're back after the 60-second break right here on 97.9 The River. Can't get much for five bucks these days unless... Is that a real song? I think she liked it. Your choice of sandwich plus all this for just five bucks is worth celebrating. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's Piggy Bank. Looking for fair prices, professional service, and the most customer-friendly shop in the tri-state? Then Freedom Gun and Pawn in Lavalette is your kind of place. Freedom Gun and Pawn has the best selection of new, pre-owned, and vintage firearms, plus a large stock of ammo and accessories. Freedom Gun and Pawn is everything you want in a gun and pawn shop. Freedom Gun and Pawn, proud to support our local high schools and communities. Across from Food Fair and Lavalette, online at freedomgunandpawn.com. You really can't get much for five bucks these days, unless. Is that a real song? I think she liked it. Your choice of sandwich plus all this for just five bucks is worth celebrating. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's Piggy Bank. 
Missed extra point by Hornbuckle, making the score 34-15. Hornbuckle will tee it up at the 40-yard line, kicking from left to right as we are down to 349 left to play in regulation. Hornbuckle sky kick over to the far side. It's going to be fielded over there by Roach. Roach will bring it back towards the near side. They'll turn around and hand it back over, coming up the middle, Ooh. and a pull down by the jersey tackle Ooh. this time. Yeah, and a penalty flag. It's a horse collar. Going to get him for the horse collar. Ray did Ray he, Williams. Did he hand that off to Sites? He handed it off to Terry. Yeah, okay, Terry. Yeah, he handed it off to Terry. Four, four ended up with the, with the football, but, boy, Ray, Ray, I knew when that arm <laughs> came out that that was going to result in that horse collar. Yeah, not, there's there's not much there's not much to sort out here. No, on this that one. One. <laughs> but you know what? It might have been a touchdown saving that's tackle. That's true. Though, that's true. Because he would have been gone. Yep. yep. Roach got it. Did the quick pitch backwards. Perhaps getting yep. back to the speed a little bit more. Yeah, Terry was the one who ended up with football and and, and got the worst collar. In all the years we've been here at this stadium, thirty what thirty years? Yeah, thirty yeah. years. Yeah. I don't think a referee mic has worked right. I, I would I would agree with that <laughs> at, at every game I've ever been to. I mean, the, the, the antennas are right here. Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. All right, trips to the right, single wide out near side. And uh, Fighting Tigers playing from behind. Thacker out of the pistol, takes a snap, steps up all kinds of time. Check that new quarterback this time. Ooh, Fires back Terry. across the middle, goes incomplete. And that is Shockey or Shrek, who's the quarterback now in there. And Terry almost came away with that one. Boy, did he. Coverage uh, for the Knights was my, uh, was uh, check that Miles Meters. Again, he's had a great he's had a great game, both offensively and defensively. Braden Shrek now 0 for 2 on the season. That is only his second pass attempt this year. He's going to go out of the pistol. He is lined up seven yards off the football. The back is behind him, and the Knights are going to burn a timeout. We will keep it right here. We'll keep it right here with uh, 34-15 as our score. Give us an opportunity to check in with Kent Bryson, who's down there on the sidelines. We've seen a lot, Kent, of a lot of cramping up out here from some players. How humid is it out there tonight? Oh, maybe not. Oh, we'll get Kent's politicking I out there. I think, he's I think he's turned away from us, yeah, actually. Yeah. Look like he's politicking. He, had, he actually just texted and said that fatigue was starting yeah. to sit on, set in on both sides of the field, but more more so you could tell in that last drive of Midlands that, that fatigue was setting in for the Fighting Tigers. Yeah, it, and uh, it definitely isn't that, you can tell. So we're down to 334 left to play. I think the makings of what we've had here tonight is something that's pretty special. You look forward to it, and it's obviously going to happen again next year. Yeah. I think this is a, a really cool thing to start things off with. and. Uh, Great turnout. I mean, great crowd turnout. The fans are loving it. Yep. Uh, a, a great turnout for a high school game. And, again, if you're if you're one to recruit local kids, yeah. this is the way to do it. Absolutely. Trips to the right, single wide out near side. Shrek out of the shotgun, takes a snap, has time, fires back, has a receiver. It's Roach making the grab as he falls down just short of the first down marker. Needed to get to the 33. He made it to about the 34 when he slid down. So it would be uh, – Third and one coming up. The officials are going to measure for this one. Oh, no. they're no, they're they're oh, really no, no way, no way. <laughs> they're saying they're first down. Shy. No, <laughs> come on. Okay, now they're, they're rolling. Now the they're rolling the clock. State. All right. He did. He did signal for it <laughs> there for a second. <laughs> All right, out of the pistol. Here comes Shrek. Rolls out near side, has pressure, gets rid of the football, has a receiver making the grab at the 31. Got enough for the first down. Moves across the 30 and works his way down. The reception there made by Nick Seitz. Landon Knight at Cannon Lewis over there on coverage for the Knights. But that was good enough for the first okay, down without that, the assistance. Now it's a first down. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Somebody needs to get some glasses. I, me, yeah. most of the time, but. Yeah. Clearly the official. That Shrek time. rolls out, throws the pass. It goes down at the ankles for the intended receiver on the far side. It goes incomplete. Sights the intended receiver again that time for the Fighting Tigers, but that ball basically just thrown at his ankles. Stops the clock with 245 left to play in regulation. Capital Midland 34, Ironton 15. Knights defense with a lot of – some fresher jerseys out there right mm -hmm. now, but still some of the starters, including Cannon Lewis out there. I don't think you could – I don't think he would come out of the game if you asked him it right now. Out honestly. of the shotgun, here's the snap, rolls out, fall, the football's on the turf, it's rolled around, and I believe Cabell Midland has come up with it. 
as the battle continues on with it. And the Knights, yep, it is Cabell Midland football. Recovering the football for the Knights was Logan Gillespie, number 42. He was excited on that yes, one. Yes, he was. And it was the pressure coming towards the near side. Give credit on the knockdown on that one by Cabell Midland. And and it was uh, with the pressure that time from Logan Hobbs. Hobbs yeah. was one that knocked it loose. And Gillespie picked it up for sure. But on a grand stage here tonight, Midland takes over after the fumble was picked up right just shy of midfield. They've got two and a half minutes to uh, till they get to celebrate their victory. Coming out will be Shockey. Staying out there with Jones. The football is placed inside the block M, just at the top of the H and the E. Give you a perspective on it. Hand off to Jones. Nice spin move. That puts him inside Ironton territory, crossing the 50 to about the 49-yard line. They'll let that play clock, they'll let that play clock roll down. Let that game clock roll down as well. Curtis Jones Jr. tapping the, the helmet. That's the signifying <laughs> coach. All right, I'm ready. Yeah. Bring me out. <laughs> He's the workhorse tonight. He did a great job. He's actually kind of stretching out a little bit. I think he's starting to cramp up. So. Logan Hobbs will come in and in relief of Curtis Jones. Knights taking time, letting the clock roll down the best they can. Play clock is stopped, actually. No, this one's stopped. That one's down to single digits, but I don't know which one you look at here. And a handoff to Hobbs. Hobbs, second effort, left side. He picks up about a yard or two. Gets down to about the 47-yard line. Officials stop the clock as Ironton burns a timeout. We'll keep it right here with a minute 40 left to play. Certainly yeah. strange things have happened, but, uh, and they're, they're probably giving their guys just a little bit of a breather right now, but there's not much more action going to take place. I don't think you're going to see a whole lot out of this Cabell Midland offense. Enough time here for uh, the head coach and uh, Trevin Pendleton to have a few words with the official out here uh, during this time. I think it was more of a timeout so he could talk to the official. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but up next week, we're back on Friday night, we're back at the Castle. The Knights will be taking on South Charleston next week. Our airtime will be 6.30, 7 o'clock kickoff coming your way next Friday night. Getting back to and, and not that the not that a half hour makes a huge difference. A seven o'clock start start of game time is is pretty nice to be honest with you. And uh, if you've watched football out of the Kanawha Valley for the last few weeks, the South Charleston Black Eagles have had a rough few weeks. So uh, you're going to see a lot of kids get opportunities next week. Is what I'm getting we'll at. See what happens on that one. All right, Shockey out of the pistol formation once again. Hobbs, the handoff to him, breaks it out left, gets across 45-40. He's got two men to beat, then he oh, loses no. the football, gets across the 20, it's picked up at the 12-yard line, and the ball carrier comes back, the defender comes back near side. He gets a block on the far side, block on Shockey. He'll continue to work his way down the far side of the field of the 30, and Nida comes in with a touchdown-saving tackle. Maddox Markle, the sophomore, was the one that picked it up. All the way back at about the 10-yard line. Also in on coverage was Mason Ramsey for the Knights. He and Landon Nida able to chase Markle down. But, boy, oh, boy, Hobbs coughed the football up. And Markle found a way to get way down into Cabell Midland territory. Hobbs took a helmet onto the arm that knocked the ball out. So, when he did, at least it went backwards. No, but a right, heck of a good right. run back that a time, great though, run by, for by Markle. Markle. Yeah, great run for Markle. The ball's right at the 20-yard line. So they're deep in the middle and territory. Great field position on that on that fumble return. Shrek is the quarterback out of the pistol. Two wide outs left, two wide outs right, short side of the field. Here goes Shrek. All kinds of time. Looking to go to the corner of the end zone. It goes incomplete. Pass intended over on the far side there for Terry. Good he, coverage that time by the Knights. Meters on coverage for Cabell Midland again. He's just had a great game all the way around. Stops the clock with a minute 13 left to play in regulation. Second down and 10 coming up for Ironton. Got one of the ball boys on the field. Got to get him <laughs> off. Yeah. They had a little bit of trouble getting the football out there earlier. There he goes, Shrek. Now under pressure. Steps up, fires back across the middle, has the receiver. It's Terry. Nice spin move there at the six-yard line. He'll walk into the end zone. Actually takes a hit at the goal line. Touchdown. Ironton. Shrek with a great move. Nice spin move. That got him uh, that extra yard and got him enough into the end zone for the touchdown off a 10-yard touchdown pass. Actually, a 21-yard touchdown pass from Shrek. 
Yeah, 21-yard touchdown pass from Strike to Terry. And they'll put a late score on the board here. As they will, let's see it. They're going to go for two? Yep, looks They're like they go are. For two. Yep, Strike's going to stay in and call the signals. All right, Shrek out of the shotgun, rolls out to his right, has all kinds of time, now under pressure, fires to the end zone, going to be intercepted in the end zone as the two-point conversion attempt is no good. That was meters on, on the interception in the end zone. Again, had a great night for the Knights. Meters uh, stops the two-point conversion. The conversion fails, so we're at 34-21. So we'll keep it right here as we get ready to wrap things up here. <laughs> we are 63 seconds from the end of this ballgame. Coming up in post game, we'll check in with Kent Bryson, grab a word with Coach Luke Sammons after they do the ceremonial handshake. And then we'll recap the scoring and get ready to wrap things up here for you on your Saturday night. I'll be interested to see what Luke has to say this evening. It's a good win. <laughs> But, again, some of those things that haunted them last week at Spring Valley were, were a little bit of an issue fundamentally. But a nice win for them on a great stage here from Jones C. Edwards Stadium tonight. Thanks to all of you that joined us here on the radio tonight and all of you that are tuned in with us across the country and around the world in our Kindred Digital Marshall Orthopedics High School Game of the Week, fueled by your neighborhood Parmar stores. Thanks to all of you that are tuned in with us tonight, checking it out on our HD digital video with our friends from Video Productions doing a heck of a great job here tonight. And I'll tell you what, providing some great coverage on the big screen here tonight too, it's, which is great. It's gorgeous. Yeah. I mean, it is so clear. That video board is. Anybody play video like games it. on it yet, I wonder? I'm going to ask them after yeah. this is over if we can do that. And that's going to yeah, be Yeah, that's right. <laughs> they tried to do the, the, the yep. muddle huddle deal, and yep. they tricked them themselves. No foul. Why was it stopped? Why was it stopped then? Exactly. <laughs> they, you had both side yeah. officials blow the whistle and throw a flag for offsides. Expecting the oh, onside kick. Here's the kick. It's going to go all the way back to Nida, and he's going to hit down to the turf. Yep. Hey, now a little extracurricular. <laughs> little extracurricular going on. And at least the officials didn't throw a flag yep, on it. You're right. Eric, cooler heads have prevailed. Now they're trying. Now they're trying to back everybody away from one another. All right, so the Knights get the football back with a minute one left. Couple of kneel downs. We'll wrap this one up here. 34-21 is our score right now. And we'll get ready to wrap it up here tonight. Knights on their way to third win of the season. It'll be the first loss of the season for Ironton. They'll fall to three and one. Knights will break the huddle. And not in the victory formation yet. Matter of fact, all the starters are still out. Yep. <laughs> Shockey out of the pistol. He's got Curtis Jones Jr. lined up behind him. Handoff is to Jones. And Flags. a penalty flag comes in. Procedure. Yep. Yep. <laughs> He's pleading his case out there. That's uh Javon Goodrich. Push him back five yards. 58 seconds left to play. And I try to hand it off, it looks like, to Jones. Now they got the victory formation set up here with Branch and Jones offset on either side there of Shockey. The officials and a timeout taken by Ironton. Yep. Wow. Yes, so. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yep. I guess they're going to take all three of them. Wow. Yeah. I'm all surprised right. at that, too. That's all right. <laughs> That's why you got them. You That's can use right. what you want with them. You can. Now it makes you wonder if <laughs> second down, if well, you had a loss on the play of the uh, from the kneel down because it went out of the shotgun. It wasn't up underneath center. Wonder if uh, they put the football back down at the 24-yard line. If 
Midland will run the ball again or if they're going to do take a knee again. Toss one down the field at this point after after Ironton took the timeout. I think They've got Iron, a, Ironton has one more timeout yeah, left, right? right. Yes, I they have one so. more left. A beautiful, there's a beautiful trophy to the winner of this game, the Battle with the Border Trophy. Well, the, the victor will, will receive that. Now that it is the victory formation once again. Now Shockey will take the knee. He held on to the he ball did, for a little yeah. bit. He was yeah. trying to get it down further. Yep. And let's see if Ironton's going to burn their final timeout. <laughs> the Ironton coach is a little upset here on the sideline. <laughs> There's about a three-second difference, two-second difference in the game and play clock. So they'll have to kneel one more time. Yeah. And, uh, and that'll do it. Shockey, go out of the – out of the uh, the deep – every time he does it, he loses five yeah, yards. right, right. <laughs> it's going to hurt his stats a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yep, that's true. Taking the snap, and that's it. That should be that'll it, unless ball. a timeout's Four, called. Three and two and one, and that'll roll the clock to zero. There you go, and that's it. We have reached the final here tonight. Cabell Midland picking up the victory over the Ironton Fighting Tigers in the Battle of the Border. The first game will go to Cabell Midland. The series now to two and one. The Knights with the advantage, and now they will get ready to take on South Charleston coming up next week. We will take a break. We'll come back. Post game coming up next right here, 97.9 The River. No. When you send or receive a text message, you take your eyes off the road for five seconds. At 55 miles an hour, that's like driving more than the length of a football field blindfolded. As a result, thousands of people die every year in crashes related to distracted driving. That's why we're cracking down on people who text or use their smartphones while driving. We would rather you cross the goal line alive. Law enforcement officers write tickets to save lives. Don't text and drive. Hi, I'm Doug Nestor. I'm from Canova, West Virginia. And when I'm back home, you can find me at my local Parmar store. We had that gold and blue pride at your local Parmar store. We are coming to your neighborhood soon. West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Maryland. We have you covered. Download the Parmar app and sign up for the Parmar rewards card. Food, gas, groceries, and more. We are gold and blue proud, and we are Parmar stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Going out? Hungry? Have kids? Looking for a fun, casual joint? Then Roosters at Pullman Square in Huntington is the place to be. Bring the kids 12 and under on Tuesdays, and they eat for just 99 cents all day long. That's right, an entree, two sides, and a drink for less than a buck. Plus, Tuesday at Roosters means a featured appetizer all day for just $2. Roosters will lighten your mood and not your wallet. And you can always enjoy your favorite sports on Roosters 40 TVs. Roosters at Pullman Square in Huntington, a fun casual joint. Here at Thornhill, our goal is to provide you with the best automotive experience. From our state-of-the-art facilities, amenities, and certified staff, we call family. You'll be offered the best experience you deserve. We take pride in our focus for customer care, bringing the best quality and support for all of our customers' needs. What are you waiting for? It's your time to get behind the wheel with Thornhill. Get started now at thornhillautomotive.com. Just tag it at Thornhill, where it's all here for you. US 119 Chapmanville and Logan, WV to Belfry, Kentucky. Go! 
for the Thun- big win today here for the Cabell Midland Knights as they pick up the victory and the first game here of the battle at the border, and it goes into the hands of the Cabell Midland Knights. That big trophy, Kent Bryson, just presented to the team. I'm sure a very happy coach, Luke Sammons. I'm here, and I want to ask Coach. Coach, what does this victory mean for you and your program? I mean, it's I don't want to be like a coach talk, but it's the next game. I mean, it was special playing a really good football team from, you know, out of state that, you know, we have a lot of respect for in Ironton. Great program, great tradition, uh, very well-coached team. Their kids are a lot like, you know, our program. They play hard. They play tough. But, yeah, anytime you can be resilient and win, big-time environment. I mean, this was special. I mean, both – both communities brought out. I mean, that's a big-time crowd for a high school football game, and I thought it was special to win. We want to get your take on a couple of things that we saw here. First of all, your senior captains, Cannon Lewis and Curtis Jones, Jr., how did they play in tonight's game? Well, I mean, in big games, big players make big plays, and we got some big-time players, and hats off to them. I told Cannon, you know, he played his butt off, and Curtis, they're great kids, number one. Great students, great kids, great people, and I'm proud of them. They deserve it. You know, um, they work really hard. And I love them, and they're, they're a great group. Of, and, you know, when you got those two type of kids, one's going to W, one's going to NC State, that's why they're going there. And I tell you, your program is known by its toughness, and I think we talked about a play that we think turned the whole tide of this game, that last play in the second quarter. Uh, what did you tell your team at halftime after that? I mean, you know, just keep battling. You know, last week we had a bunch of turnovers and mistakes. We still didn't play perfect this week, but – the, the, the character of our team, they're resilient. They're tough. They're resilient. They didn't waver. And, you know, some teams waver. You know, they, backs against the wall, but they found a way to make a play. I know we had a big, couple of big pass plays, a couple of big runs. You know, hats off to Ironton. They have a good defense. They, they're physical. It's a physical game. The, our kids are going to be sore from both, both schools. Guys, is there anything else yep. that you think you want to know? That's good. Just tell Coach congratulations. Big win. They said congratulations, and we have very good ratings. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thank you. All right, thank you. There you go. All right, thanks a lot, Kent Bryson. Big thanks to head coach Luke Sammons and the big win here tonight. And, you know, this game was 15-14 going in, uh, 15, actually 14-8 going into the half. And a lot of points in that second half. And the Knights took advantage of some fumbles they and did. some miscues by Ironton on short fields. Did. The Knights, though, had some miscues on their own, but their defense held solid. Defense was stellar. Some of those fundamental mistakes from last week haunted them a little bit, but Midland was able to be resilient on the defensive side of the ball, cause those turnovers, and lead to those th- those points off of turnovers, which was great. And and I know you hear coaches say that all the time. Big-time players make big-time plays. Look at how many kids made big-time plays. And he alluded to guys that are going to NC State next year, but look at the cast of characters that he has tonight and what all those kids did. Nida. Jones, Cannon Lewis. Uh, you, we talked about uh, uh, Meters having a yeah, gra- having a great, a great game. having a great game as well. Almost like a breakout Trace game. Ad- for him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Trace Adkins had a great ball game. You had a lot of guys do it in a very quiet way tonight. But they there were so many kids out there that deserve credit for this victory tonight. Up next for the Ironton Fighting Tigers, they will be at South Point coming up next week as they get back into uh, their play over in the Buckeye State for Cabell Midland. Next Friday night, they'll be back at the Castle taking on the South Charleston Black Eagles. Again, 6.30 pregame, 7 o'clock kickoff set for that one next week. And you'll be able to not only hear that here on the radio, but also watch it as one of our Kindred Digital Marshall Orthopedics High School Games of the Week fueled by your neighborhood Parmar store. So a big thanks, to first, to our digital side of things, Butch Mouse, Jack, and the crew all doing a great job. Thanks to them here tonight and all of you that tuned in with us digitally across the country and around the world. Thank you all for having us on. For those of you listening to us on the radio, thank you for having us tune in on the radio tonight. Big thanks to Lil Austin back in the studio, for Kent Bryson down on the field, for my partner uh, Chris Tatum. I'm Jason Toy saying once again our final score, Cabell Midland coming away with the big win in the bo- battle at the border. They take home the trophy for this year. They'll stay there in the trophy case at Cabell Midland High School for the next 364 days as we get ready to go back at it next year here at Joan C. Edwards Stadium. Big thanks to all the great folks here at Marsh University, including uh, Christian Spears, the athletic director, and his staff for putting together a great deal here for us tonight in the battle at the border. Game one of the battle at the border goes in the hands of Cabell Midland. Big win tonight, 34-21 for our entire crew. Have a great weekend, everybody.